Alright, so we are going to do an over-explained Raiders run. Uh, just as kind of an intro, guys, uh, the chat interaction is a bit different during over-explained. Since the focus is uh, really on just, like, like I guess, uh, teaching, it's designed for, I guess, uh, intermediate players to learn to play on, like, expert difficulty settings, or for newer players. And there'll probably be some parts that are a little slower for people that have been around the stream forever. Um, but we, our, our, our viewership has increased quite a bit. So I think it's important that we, that we don't leave the newer players out of the loop. Uh, hold on. That, oh, that also means I'm not going to interact with chat for things that aren't specifically related to the game. So things like, uh, you know, people posting a famed item and say, hey, can you tell me if this is good? Uh, I'm not going to respond to those during over explained games. So let me just go pour my coffee and then we'll get started in a minute. So, all right, I'm back. Um, people that have like questions on how do I build this brother, that kind of stuff. I think we have gotten less and less of that as we've grown. Um, feel free to post those, but you know, you have to chat will have to answer itself. So let me go ahead and make sure I put the over explain the timer and flag on the account on the run. Boom. Okay, there we go. So let's talk about the Northern Raiders origin. Northern Raiders Origin tends to be a little bit easier than the Vanilla Origin. It does have some tricks, and the, the first five days I think are pretty tough on average. This is, an or this is an Origin that I played quite a bit before Burning Deserts, and I haven't played as much since. Uh, I guess of note is also how we approach the game. Uh, the way I approach the game is every time I start a new run, every time I start a new run, uh, my expectation is that I win. That I beat a legendary, beat a crisis and a legendary every time I push a new run. So we're not going to chain reset for good luck for, you know, a hundred times. Uh, we're not going to play risky. We're not going to like, play fast. Uh, we're going to play slow and steady. Like if we were one of these brothers or if this is our company and we're trying to make money. So we're going to play this, uh, we're going to attempt to play this optimally. Um, this is not an origin I've played much lately, so... There's a, ch there's a chance I make mistakes, and if there are, we'll talk about them. We'll talk about them, we'll analyze them, and we're likely to upload failed overexplained runs too. So we do have a couple overexplained runs that I uploaded where we wiped, <laughs> which I think is interesting. I don't, I don't just upload successes. So uh, the first thing is, let's look at our brothers. Uh, we are playing a pick seed. Here's the seed. I'll put it in chat. And we're playing Explored. The reason why is this is meant to be a follow-along for intermediate players. So I don't think it's appropriate to try to make this as difficult as possible. Uh, I think as we make the settings more and more difficult, people that are trying to play along are going to have more and more problems. And I, I think we're going to lose a lot of the conversation pieces as well. Or there will be more layers of complexity to playing the Unexplored that won't actually make sense unless you've played an Explored map. So I, I think that this is better to do at this time for Onyx, for for Explored and to pick seed. So, sure-footed is one of the best traits you can get. The sure-footed gives you five melee defense. Uh, melee defense is generally the most powerful statistic. It scales exponentially, and starting with plus five melee defense is very very powerful as well. And this brother just has generally good stats. A sim over here. We have another sure-footed guy, and this is a farm seed, right? So. Which is very high stats. This brother does not have great traits, but two stars in defense means he's going to be very good. Uh, when you're looking at brothers here, what am I looking at for whether he's good or not? I'm looking at his base stats, uh, and I generally prioritize base stats over stars. Like this guy, having 10 defense on day one is probably better than having two stars and three. So this guy will have 
you know, effective. It's, this guy effectively will have you know, 13 extra defense uh, over a character with zero at level 11, and this guy will have 10. But this guy is going to be more powerful for us in the early game. So, I think people do tend to get caught up in the stars and not look at the base stats. I'm also looking at base HP, fatigue, and resolve. Uh, low base resolve is very hard to fix. It's very hard to fix before it causes problems. So I, I tend to really dislike in the early and mid game low resolve backgrounds. These guys are all running mid 40s. Uh, we probably only have to to you to level resolve once on these brothers for them to to feel pretty good. And then I think the next most important primer says hit points. Um, hit points is especially when you don't have like nimble or battle forged. You die really fast, so the higher hit points you have, the less you get injured. The easier it is to pass resolve checks. A part of the resolve check formula is based on percentage of HP. So higher HP actually helps keep your resolve up, which help ke helps keep you with those confident boosts or to not losing stats to, to breaking. Uh, this brother never takes resolve checks from HP loss because he's impatient. And then, and then we look at Fatigue. Fatigue is generally not a very important stat. Uh, the reason why is, generally, you don't do much with, with Fatigue until you're level 11. Like, until you have Berserk and Frenzy, or like, higher level. So it doesn't do anything in the early game. Um, oftentimes, by the time you're triggering things like Berserk and Killing Frenzy, the fight's not really contested anymore. So they don't do that much. <clears throat> and then even with the Weapon Mastery, you need 12 extra fatigue to be able to sw swing your weapon one more time. So we're leveling fatigue three to four times to get one extra opportunity in a fight that may not even matter later in the game. Uh, that's, so there's a lot of pieces that make fatigue low value. Then obviously initiative is, is kind of the worst of these stats. The really only value in initiative is that we'll take dodge. So higher base initiative can result in one or two more defense. Athletic is, it just saves him a bit of fatigue. It's its not super impactful. It is a nice little touch, though. Same with Eagle Eyes, like, seeing farther is nice, but it's not going to change the game. Our Monk is Fainthearted and Team Player. So Fainthearted is a bit of a pain, but his resolve is so high that I'm, I'm not super, I'm not super upset about it. And then he has good HP and fatigue. So how are we going to build these guys? Uh, we're just going to go dodge quick hands, probably on all of them. These guys don't really have enough defense that they want to play on flanks. They're going to be stuck as mid-formation brothers. This brother we could try to do something cute with. We could make him like a greatsword brother. But his attack is almost too high. So this guy is probably better than any of the starting lads. If you just look at his stats, he's got about 15 more stats in this column. His attack is just as good as the glad. And his defense is on you know better than a bear on Pilot Bear. So this is this is this guy's probably better than all the starting glads. And these two are maybe only a little bit worse. Uh, by by later in the game. Because things hit hit points tend to scale very well as we play. So we'll make them dodge quick hands builds. Uh, and it is important with the order we take the perks in. So Smud here is gonna get Colossus first. For brothers you intend to keep past, I'd say, like, level 6, Colossus is usually your best take at level 1, uh, with Nine Lives being the only real competitor. Taking Student is just is just generally greedy. Often we can take more fights, we can take harder fights. Our fights will be more profitable, and we'll take less losses if we take uh, an effective perk versus Student. And we're just going to probably take uh, HP, Attack, and Defense at every level. Uh, ones in Melee Defense should generally be taking, taken, as long as you plan on using the character for more than a couple levels. Because again, it scales exponentially. So we're going to take dodge too. So uh, that's going to help us hit that point of exponential scaling on defense a lot faster. And here I'll take this one. We said we wanted one four and resolve. So we'll go ahead and take that at the first offer. Gifted, gifted and dodge compete for the second perk. I think gifted is generally better. Uh, we're obviously getting less defense than we would with dodge. But we kind of make up for it by getting 5 hit points. And then uh, the extra melee skill is really valuable in, the, in those first couple fights. 
when your brothers can still struggle to hit things. And we're going to level all these brothers essentially the same way. Unfortunately, they don't roll the greatest in uh, defense right now, but that's fine. Uh, they'll probably even out. I mean, I don't care about these fatigue stars. But by the time this guy's fatigue ever matters, we've either, we've either won or lost the run. So there's just not a point in leveling it. And then same thing here. We'll take the 1 4 in resolve, and otherwise, we're just going attack, defense, HP. So, how much better are these guys than they were than we started? They have 4 more resolve, so 4% less chance of, of, of breaking. We gave them each about about 9 more melee skill. Uh, so, if, if we're fighting against enemies that have, let's say, 10 defense, we have 15% more chance to hit. Uh, we're also probably not getting injured by most thug tier weapons, now that we have 90 hit points on these guys. And then we've probably given them, uh, I don't know, 7 or 8 more defense on average. The monk does not start off with any levels. So, usually give the monk the dog. He doesn't have a weapon or anything. And now I have to pick who gets what weapon. This guy has the least defense. So he probably goes in the middle. Uh, this guy has the most defense and hit points. Smud. So let's go ahead and give him the best armor that we can kind of kind of you know play him, I guess, the riskiest. And the guy in the middle will give him the lightest armor. And we'll have to be really careful with uh, Fuga. And then Irik here is kind of uh, the middle of the three. We can bandages are generally not useful, but right now we don't have anything else for our monk to do. So now let's look at our seed. So we, we know we have very good starting brothers. What are we looking for in raiders? Um, we're looking for trade goods. So when we kill caravans, we we get a chance to get either medical supplies, tools, or ammo. We'll usually get food, and then we'll get strange meat from the donkeys, and then a chance at you know, whatever trade goods they may be carrying. So looks like there's copper and fur from Torvastad. Nothing. There's ham from Jerstal, which is ham is essentially a low-value trade good. A ham in Norheim and Herbalist's Grove. So we are likely to get medical supplies if we raid caravans from Norheim. A Hammerstead here has fur, fur, so the caravans from Hammerstead will, will be very valuable. Fur is a fairly, is a very valuable trade good, and it does sell for increased gold in the desert. Helvikberg, uh, no trade goods. Brewery, so I guess we have beer, and we have ham. Freedward, this is probably some kind of like gatherer's hut or something. Two lumber camps. So, I uh, will also get a lot of lumber, caravans, and freed word. Leather tanner and mushroom grove. I guess mushrooms are all we're going to get. And, and, and gather such. Mushrooms and medical supplies from Shenzmore. Koningsfield has wool and orchards. So, we'll get fruit from here. Maybe wheat. Then, Fintersburg has leather. So, probably nothing from Fintersburg. No trade goods. Uh, Herbalist Grove lumber. So it looks like a lot of low value trade goods. Things like lumber and wool aren't worth that much. But because most cities have trade goods, most caravans will be worth hitting. Now as we go south, our first stop is probably going to be to a city. So we can try to get some money rolling and, and get a couple more brothers. The Citadel here. Now sale prices are determined by the amount of outbuilding. So each of these things will increase sale prices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a fairly large citadel. Prices are probably good enough we could sell here. If you have a port city here, which is slightly larger, probably a little bit better place to sell. Uh, Amber over here. I don't know how much trading we do in Raiders. I expect very little. So I don't think we care that there's trade goods here. Uh, no ports in the map, just this one little hop, just this corner. Uh, no ports over to the south or anything. And I don't know how much we even care about the south. Obviously, like our, our goal is to start by killing caravans in the north. Uh, and trying to snowball off of, off of that. 
So we may just, we may never even go to the desert for quite some time. Swamp Keep, kind of a useless city for us. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of these cities are kind of useless for us. Holzburg. There will be good recruiting here, but uh, good to see you, Bees. Bees, we're doing a Raiders Over Explained run. How was your uh, how was your speed run stuff going? So this is a picked explored seed. Now on our way south, there's two fights we can take. We can take peasants, and we can take uh, caravan hands with no guards. So we're likely to not be taking a lot of fights on our way south. We are going to have to kind of carefully make our way down there. Oh, we can't fight militia yet. Militia will sally out from towns and try to kill us. And we also can't really take supply caravans, noble armies. Uh, these kind of fights we cannot take. Uh, throwing weapons are quite hard to deal with until you have essentially raider gear. Okay, here's a trading caravan with one guard, which I think should be a fine fight if we can avoid the Helvikberg company here. We'll try to hit them in the forest down here. Two really easy. This is our this is our first hit. We'll try to hit this caravan in the forest. It's only caravan hands. So our goal here is to not lose much HP or armor. I wonder if they come at us or not. No, we don't. We don't outnumber them. Um, I think our best play is to. <clears throat> so, yeah, we don't outnumber them because the monk can't fight yet. So, if we face them up, we're giving them plus five attack on each guy. We should find a choke point where three of our guys can fight two of theirs. So that would be probably somewhere back here. We're gonna go look for a choke point. Yeah, very very good first fights. Uh. And we're not trying to make the start super hard here. This is supposed to be an over-explained run where people that are intermediate players can follow along. It looks like they are not going to come to us. So we are going to have to advance to them. If we had a, a single range unit, if we only had one or two brothers, uh, they likely would would uh, charge at us. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they charge here. It's worth a try, though. It's worth a try. There, there's no, like... This doesn't cost us any resources to burn up burn up time here. And losing one raider early is very, very crippling. It's it's essentially a loss. The, so here this guy kind of has a, a clever position. If we move to attack him, he's likely to have high ground on us. Right. <clears throat> so if I if I filter down through here, I could try to claim these two high ground tiles. So I think we try to filter our whole team through the southern end. And we're, so we're just going to be chilling like here. If I move to this tile, this caravan guard will move here and claim high ground against me. So right now our goal is still to just get set up to get on high ground. And then if we feel like we have a, a problem, we can release the dogs. And again, this doesn't cost us any resources to take our time here. So let's, let's get set up and, and play this fight as cleverly as we can. Okay, so here, can I claim the high ground? If I move Eric here, Eric is my medium. This is a nice tile to fight on, but I don't have a way to force a fight on this tile. If I move around here, whatever Barbarian I put here will be very pressured. I didn't take Pathfinder, so I, I can get a brother up here. This is going to be a pressured tile as well. If you look at weapons, daggers are not particularly dangerous on, on caravan hands. They will not use puncture. And he has a hatchet, which is also not particularly dangerous. I could kind of retool my expectations and try to put a guy here. And then drop the dog on this tile to pin him there. Who would I put here then? This tile is scary. It's surrounded by three. And I can't bait them into here. So I, th I think my best bet is to push through here or I can try to force them to engage by punching the donkey with the monk. I think that's my best play. If I put the monk in melee range of the donkey, they will charge. Yeah, caravan, caravan hands cannot use skills. They can't use stun. They can't use puncture. It's not in their AI. So they're very, very easy fights 
if you need like you're injured or something and you don't want to take a hard fight. Now, if our plan is to force them to charge with the monk, this is probably good terrain. We can fight one at a time. It's not perfect terrain. I think if we if we back off all the way here, we can't help the monk if they go on him. So see if I go here, if they let me go to this tile. They might charge when I get close to the donkey as well. I'm kind of concerned this guy will just kill the monk. Although this monk is bad. Kirin guards are a different story. Now as soon as we get a pitchfork and quick hands on these guys, we can force them to charge. So again, my concern is this guy hopping through here. Uh, if I can get all the way to this tile in one turn, he can't he can't get there though, without going all the way around. In which case a dog is probably about on par with this guy. This guy has decent armor. Alright, next turn he can move up the, the dog for the donkey. And the monk losing get, dying is not great. This this monk is is not amazing. All right, so I can move up here. Now this guy can't, he can't like rotate the donkey or anything, right? Now they should close the melee because I'm threatening the donkey, I believe. Yeah, now they'll move into melee. And I can just kind of kill them in this bottleneck. Uh, they are going to try to circle back on the monk. So we do need to be aware, but the monk can actually retreat this way over the donkey. Now that now that we outnumber them, I think I'm gonna set up on this high ground. And try to get the monk. Oh, I can't jump over the donkey, huh? Get the monk out of here. But I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna threaten the donkey to force him out of position. And here what we're gonna do is the more heavily armored raiders, which are also our higher defense raiders, are going to fight. And the other one is just gonna be kind of being reserved. This is win streak style, you know, if, if you don't care about win streaks, you would just run at these caravans in the open and hope and restart. Uh, not really my style, but... Okay, there's two left. I think we get... Change our position here a little bit. The heavily armored guy being here, I think is important. Because they're likely to... They're likely to pressure him with a second caravan guard. So we're gonna get ready to just jump this guy next turn. With everybody at once. I think that first entry here. Oh, he's gonna, he's got higher initiative, so we're gonna actually get to go before him, or go after him with everybody. Kevin guards are also really nice early because they don't run away. That means you always get 100% of the experience available in the fight. Okay. Is there anything we can do with this dagger that's useful? Uh, this helm, I believe, is an upgrade to this hat. 40. Uh, we got some decent-ish gear for the monk. Backpack shields and the two guys I'm putting on the flank. So backpack shields are very valuable for two reasons. One, if you start to get in trouble, you get defense. Uh, two, the enemy AI will attack you based on a calculation of the effective hit points of your brothers. So if you're using backpack shields correctly you can force the ai to juggle targets and not focus fire a brother and that's actually very very powerful i think i put daggers on a couple of these guys i guess the two with higher attack uh we have a, a weapon for the monk now so we can we can stop them from like just going on one guy with backpack backpack shields backpack shields have no opportunity cost until you have dodge but buckler, I mean, bucklers are too fatigued, right? Like, there's no reason to not at least backpack a buckler on, on guys at this point of the game. It's just, there's just so many powerful plays you can make with them. You can pull them out and push people out of position. Um, so obviously we're going to take this, this uh, raid caravans, right? 
And we're gonna hit. We're gonna wait for the forest again. We're gonna be patient and, and play in good terrain. This fight's slightly harder. One of the caravan hands is now upgraded to a guard. I don't think we can separate these two. So I think we're stuck running. I think we're stuck running away. The caravan will still be ahead, so this this army will stop chasing us. As long as it stop, doesn't stop in Conan's field, we can still get a fight out of it. Yep. And we can ambush them in this patch of forest here. We don't really even lose time here. Because we had to go this way anyways. So, we have one more unit here. And we're going to try the same kind of tricks. So we want to be able to keep our people together. Uh, the first question, the first uh, decision here is, do I try to push through north or south? It looks like it could be hard to keep my team together through the north flank. And I do want everybody to be near each other. So they can support each other. Uh, help minimize the RNG. Very, very nice uh, armor here. This leather lamellar armor is the best nimble armor that you generally find. So we would like to dagger this guy. Although these guys are probably too strong for us to dagger. Now let's look at the battlefield. We want to ignore this guy. Generally, we want to kill weaker enemies first to get to confident and ruin the enemy's morale. So if we can fight away from the stronger enemies, uh, by the time we fight him, he might have, you know, minus 20% defense, minus 20% chance to hit. It is important to know that things like confident uh, actually do multiply your defense in the shield as well. Confident even multiplies your attack bonus from fast adaptation. You get eleven. You get eleven per stack on fast adaptation if you have if you're confident. So it does a little bit more than it sounds like. Can we kill this guy alone? We don't have reach weapons. I do kind of want to avoid this guard. How can we avoid this guard? If I engage melee up here on this guy, these three will charge. Um, so I could set up two guys here, my two stronger ones here, to fight uh, enemies here. And I could, as soon as we engage with one of them, the rest will start charging. So I think I'm just gonna like work my way to the north, kind of slowly here. I don't want to move too many tiles. I don't want to be short on AP if they come at me. So again, we're, we're taking our time and setting these fights up correctly. If I attack here, I'm attacking two into two. Uh, it's not a great trade for me. These guys are generally non-threatening with these weapons. This guy is very threatening though. If I had any sort of range weapon, I could kill these guys. But from range. But we'll, we'll deal with that later. So who is my weakest guy that can kill him? Um, I think I prefer matching my strongest guy against him. And the reason why is if, if RNG starts to not favor us, uh, we have good plays. It actually looks like I should set up my three barbarians here. That would make the most sense. Here, here, and here. Because then we'll fight three on two. Again, as soon as I engage melee, they're going to want to come at me. My monk? I wish I had some sort of reach weapon for him. Um, I could put my monk back here and drop a dog as well. Like That's an option. So the monk can kind of help. The monk doesn't have Colossus yet, though. So that's kind of like a bit sus, right? So whoever's on this tile will be... These two tiles will get the most pressure. So we could... If we really want to protect the Barbarians, we can put the Monk here and the Dog here and risk losing them. I think that's our best play. Given that these Barbarians are quite valuable and this Monk is kind of replaceable, honestly. He's just going to be here in case for now. And I think I want to use Iric here. I think Iric with the Monk backup is enough firepower. My medium strength Barb. And then this guy who may may have to fight two enemies will not be getting pressured. I'm gonna wait with everybody if I can. Now I guess we we get in there, right? 
All right, good dog. No, unfortunately, my dog is going to charge at them. So this gives us a three on two matchup. I, I, I can't recall the dog. He may go on the donkey, which would be great for us. Yeah, so if, if they swarm the dog, it does kind of ruin our plan. Uh, now we can catch this guy out alone. I think this is a good play. Yeah, I think we have to, to, to catch this guy. We're going to let him shield, shield wall. We're going to give him a lot of plays. Um, let's think about that, though. He can move three tiles. So he could move here. We can't dagger him if we go on him now. If he moves here, we're gonna be chasing him while they fight the dog. I think we just we think we're just forced to go on this guy and give him first strike. Which I don't like. Uh, but it is what it is. And we do not get the option. Daggering this is too risky. Even if we take one injury, this armor is worth like 300 gold. Even one injury is, is going to be more costly than that. Because we're going to have to skip fights if we get injured. And skipping fights is very expensive. So opportunity cost is something to always consider. I think people get obsessed about daggering and, and take a ton of damage. You know, lose their armor to do it. And that's just not worth it. So do we go in aggressively to save the dog here? I'm down. All right, doggo saved. And we did we did luckily get the armor. So we can kind of upgrade everybody's armor. Uh, we get a uh, upgraded dagger. The sword is actually good pretty early. It costs less fatigue to swing and it's going to do five more damage. And have 10 more to hit. Thank you. So when we're fighting stuff like thugs, uh, this is like thugs and caravan hands, this is better. Once we start fighting harder enemies, we're, we want better weapons. But we can give the monk this club in case he needs to stun stuff. Uh, backpack shield for our most aggressively positioned brother. Uh, backpack shields for everybody now. And a backpack shield is going to be more valuable than the bandage. So we can choose Bandage or Club. Uh, bandage, if you take a bleeding injury during the fight, it will remove the injury. Pretty narrow. Pretty narrow. Um, the Monk also has 45 attack. Melee skill. I think trying to stun on 45%, we're going to have about a 1 in 3 chance to stun. Uh, slight, slightly lower than 50-50 chance to stun in 2 attacks. That sounds thin, right? How often do we want to spend two attacks? And uh, how much stamina here? 50 fatigue, all of his fatigue, for a 50-50 chance to stun. I think probably never. Uh, when would we want to use stun? I like to stun guys before they shield wall. Stunning is very powerful against like footmen, brigand leaders. Uh, a lot of things it's good against in the early game. But I don't see a reason with you know attack in the 40s to try to stun. We can't really fight brigands yet, so I'm assuming these footsteps coming from the forest are some kind of brigand. So we're just going to kind of walk around. Four raiders is going to be outside of our scope. So if we go down this road, it could potentially catch a caravan from Gunfrost. A village with a lumber. I think we kind of should be, I think we mostly should be beelining though for uh, friendly territory. Kiran's from cities will likely have multiple guards that we can't fight yet. I think I want to get a couple of flankers set up and potentially a hunter. So we might go do a couple, just a couple missions to get some money going. We'd like to be able to hire the brigand very quickly. This is a friendly caravan, we can't attack them. I think mo all the caravans coming from here should be friendly. Uh, potentially we see one between here and here from Newmark. But it's unlikely we can kill a caravan from Newmark because, again, the big city caravans have more guards. But walking down the road is never bad. Exploring this piece of road is important because as we get the brigand, we have to at least have the, the map explored to be able to attack there. 
So having all the roads explored is important to getting good value out of the brigand. Uh, place to sell. We have Stenikai and Steiner. We'll get the best prices in Stenikai. So let's head there. And now we're in friendly territory. And we're just going to take it. If we see an easy delivery quest, we'll take it. Uh, follow the tracks is a great first fight again. Once we get the opportunity to trade. Caravan to Subinjin is potential. And delivery to Subinjin. So Caravan to Subinjin is likely one of our easiest fights. We will have some help. We don't know what we're fighting. Uh, we could buy mead cheap here. I think we'd prefer the harder fights though, right? Even if we have to sell stuff right now. At not like perfect prices. We'd like to be able to hold some of these expensive things <clears throat> until we have better prices. But that's just not that's not realistic, right? Let's try to use all of our money right away. So for early background hires, the most important stats to me are hit points and resolve. Uh, resolve fails can chain down your team. So if one guy's resolve fails and goes to fleeing, it'll resolve check your entire team. So things like farmhands can be a big liability early. That makes stuff like gambler is very good. This historian is a dwarf. That means he's short and is likely to have plus five defense. That makes him valuable. This is a potential early game tank. Uh, this guy would be a good heart if he didn't have a dagger. Grave, grave robbers have quite high stats. They're, I think they're better than people give them credit for. But I don't think I really want to pay for a dagger when I already have three. This fisherman comes at the net. So fishermen are often good hires because of just the net. Uh, especially once you start fighting things like raiders and you want to dagger one or two. We get one more guy. Uh, grave robber with a dagger I think is a good hire. With a, a fisherman's knife I should say. Okay we have a gambler. Let's look at the gambler. Very high HP for a gambler. Uh, good initiative. Good resolve. And good attack. Can we get any value out of him as a banner? I think he's probably... I think I'd rather have the resolve on my banner. This guy has 10 more melee skill eventually. But also... 12 less resolve. It's probably about a wash. But I think I'd rather just use him as a melee fighter. This guy... Is a stun bot. Why is he a stun bot? So because he's never confident... Uh... We're not going to keep him super long. Seven base defense is very good. And he has reasonable fatigue. This is a guy I'll, I'll opt to use as a flanker. Because he's not so good we can't afford to lose him, right? Like, if this guy dies, our, it doesn't ruin our campaign, does it? No, not at all. The guys in the flanks are likely to die. Yeah, he's also tiny. He's not going to do damage. He's never going to be confident. He's not a great brother. This brother is a god. <laughs> this brother is a god. Why is this brother a god? Uh, melee, melee defense is the skill of skills, right? So he's got three stars there. He has really high fatigue, really high HP, and high resolve. This is a brother we could use feasibly as a Battleforge tank. Uh, normally, I think you could protect one or two brothers. Yeah, so... I think this brother can be a late game tank. Uh, now tanks are very very weak until they're about level 8. So I think if we want to use this brother we have to protect him. The monk is also in the back line. We're not using him yet. We need one more brother we can afford to lose. I think two to three fodder is about all you ever want in time. So if we're hiring one brother we can afford to lose, I think we pay for we just buy a net, right? This guy has a net with legs. Alright. And he's just he's a net with legs. That's all he is. We'll go ahead and give him a shield. If I have a shield, do I have another shield somewhere? And now we discuss if it's worth it to buy a wooden shield for him or not. Um, 
if we get outnumbered, we're likely to fight seven thugs. If we get outnumbered, he's going to want a shield. It's also 150 gold. I think this guy's backpack buckler can go to him. I don't know that buying shields makes sense for us. The monk can throw a net because he doesn't have any melee skill. We're not losing anything. Just kind of upgrade the weapons in the front line here. If everybody has a dagger, that's great. Yeah, he's a human shield. So, like, are we, are we, are we paying him? For a shield. Is there a broken shield in the shop? No. Um, What else are we going to spend the money on if we don't buy a shield? We have to buy tools so that we can repair on the way back from the fight. Training is generally not worth it in this start, I think. Rating is about finding a high volume of low value fights. Um, what's for sale in the shop here? Is there a pitchfork? There's a broken war fork for 350. That's a great bargain. Um, a sling for 79 gold. I'm actually going to buy this sling. Because I am going to make my monk a thrower. He has to do something other than hold the banner. With fast adaptation, we can get him pretty good range skill here. Good to see you, Tokev. So I think this is about all we can do to prep. Uh, how greedy is it to not buy a wooden shield? We should probably buy the shield, right? It's, it's kind of greedy to not have it. Then... Everybody has at least a hood. We should probably grab a hood for this guy. Although, if we're not fighting range attackers, we don't need a hood in our back line. Now let's go follow these tracks. The seven thugs. We do have one range attacker. Now the AI only counts you as a range attacker if you have at least 45 skill. So the AI will think this guy is, does not have a range weapon unless we put him on high ground. So let's keep in mind that by, by moving our monk to high ground, we can force him to charge. And there's a really nice high ground right here. I think I'm going to opt to put my flanker on the high ground for to start. One, two, three. We're just going to stick in a line here. Uh, as they move towards us, we may make different decisions. But for now, we're going to play with the theory that, like, we just win a line fight. Uh, we don't use runners. So keep in mind there are some very effective strategies that I feel are maybe too exploitive of weak AI. We'll see how they set up and we'll, we'll come up with a plan. So kiting back doesn't help us, right? If we kind of kite back a little bit, that doesn't do anything for us. We only have one sling. It's not going to do any damage. If we move back, they will stop. They could potentially stop charging. Uh, I think we have really good damage to this part of our formation. So I think we just advance here. We take first strike over high ground. Uh... But we, we want people to attack in like pairs of trios. So if these three guys here, one, two, three, are attacking this this thug, there's no reason to hit this cleaver guy. Is there? The cleaver guy is actually the most dangerous guy on the front line. So maybe we do want to be attacking the cleaver guy. This guy has weak armor. I'd like to attack him. And we don't expect him to do anything. Here? Uh, we can shield wall or we can attack. I think we would likely kill this guy in a hit if we do hit. This guy here can probably just shield wall. And we want to try to focus on this unarmored cleaver guy. Because the cleaver, the cleaver blade will be, will be painful against our unarmored brothers. Okay, so we got two kills before they get to move. Axe in seven turns, turn done. So this guy still hasn't acted yet. I think it's better that we try to kill him. This guy hasn't acted yet. I think we let him advance and see where he goes. I would like to dagger this guy for, for his armor if we can. This guy, is it, do we dagger him or is that greedy? I think it's greedy to dagger the cleaver. Uh, it's likely to injure or bleed us. I think we just kill this guy before he damages us too much. 
I could push this guy back so I can focus down this enemy. Alright, we got rid of the dangerous weapon. And now we need to surround this guy before he runs away. So we can dagger this armor down. I generally just pick one uh, armor of fight to dagger. Oh, crap. Uh, I didn't... Alright, well, we don't get the armor. Sometimes it'd be like that. Yeah, and... Being able to take a fight again is very powerful, right? Like, we can turn around and fight right now. I uh, actually do get the armors just because we're raiders. So, uh, we do get to some upgraded armors. Ten more armor there. We get a hood here. These armors, once they're repaired, it will be will be reasonably good. Uh, I think just putting them on now rather than repairing these cloth shirts makes sense. And we got a level on Gunther here. Uh, we get to choose... Uh, I don't think we're fighting range attackers. I think I'm just going to take fast adaptation. Uh, we're going to force this guy to be a thrower. Just so he does something. I mean, you need to also assume the possibility that, like, your team just dies to chain routes. Tiny, uh, put the spear wall on this guy. Uh, if we can have these clubs, it's good to have the chance to stun, opportunity to stun people. And I don't think these cleavers are really worth using. But we will make sure everyone in front has a backpack buckler at least. Should it become necessary, it'll be nice to have them. Raiders. We are doing overexplained raiders. So what's our play now? We didn't take much damage. So we could potentially fight right now. We should sell the food that's going bad before we totally lose the value out of it. Oh, we did spend all of our money getting set up. I would like to get one ra real range unit before we leave. Uh, I think we take... Where could we hire a range unit? We're looking for things like hunter's cabins. Um, I don't see any hunter's cabins here. So if we go walk around these places looking for a hunter, how much does that cost us? It costs us probably five days. I think we, because we have to repair those two armors, I'm happy to boat to Allback. This is a pick seed. This is a picked explored seed. Beast hunts are, beast hunts are strange. They're either free fights or they're or they're very hard. Until you've reached parity with raiders, that's level four, the you know, chainmail, falchion type power. Uh, I think you generally avoid them. So we're just gonna boat back to Stenakai now. And we're going to take this caravan. 260 cargo or... The cargo pays more than the caravan. The caravan... So caravans will spawn a quest fight along this route. So if it spawns our quest fight in here, the patrols from Reed where will kill it. So it looks like we have about, I'm going to guess, a 70% chance we get a thug and raider fight from the caravan. I think that's worth the 100 gold. I think it's worth it. Uh, looks like we will probably not get a fight. The supply caravan will likely scare away any, any kind of raiders. Yeah, the fight was here, right? So it spawned the fight in here, and then the raid were uh, army killed it. Sometimes it'd be like that. And we knew that was a possibility. We can't do anything with this well supply, right? This does nothing for us. We could we could potentially trade mead into the nearest city. I think we just go back and raid, right? Here are our options. We could go south and look for southern quests. Oh, it's early. Southern quests are kind of good. This is too far of a walk to make profit on. So we could walk here, walk here, try to find some quests. We also have not checked the quests in Sandkai, so I think we just take this delivery. I know deliveries are not like... And then we can also sell the meat as we go on the way back. And we'll keep the ground grain for our men to eat. I don't think it's worth buying a Warfork. Uh, jabs I probably should have bought for the monk. But for now he's just got the, uh, he's just got the sling. 
I think this is probably a fight we lose money on. This is two to three thugs and four to five raiders. Our men are a little bit weaker than raiders. Uh, they have throwing weapons, we don't. Our men are level one. Raiders are probably equal to a, I'd say a level three to four brother, depending on the brother. Um, and their gear is also probably a little stronger than ours. So I think we could be clever and win this fight, but I think we lose money. We might get like a chain mail or two and lose three guys. I think that's probably not worth it. Well, we're looking for potentially an archer here. There aren't any to find. Uh, and I don't think we need to just, like try to snowball off dogs or anything. I think we just do the do the boring delivery quests. And then we're probably just gonna go ahead and caravans again. We need to get to this four here. It is important that we get enough money to pay our people while we do the caravans, though. Let's sell this mead. Let's take a look and see if this is worth it. See if this makes sense to do. 440 to go to Ras Sanan. We could potentially get fight some cutthroats. I think I'm fine with this. I think I'm fine with this. Because right, we don't actually we don't have the option of going north to raid, right? We only have like three, four days of food and pay, and not really enough tools. So I think I think our uh, objective now is to find get enough money and supplies together to go on a raiding trip. I would really like to have a, a real backliner. This is a tier 2 fight. It's probably not going to be fightable. Yeah, tier 2 camp. We need tier 1 camps or nothing. So, we are going to get this loop of these two southern cities. We'd like to get north before too long. Uh, it doesn't always happen that way, though. 570 gold for, for an uprising. I think that's a good deal. I don't think we have a reason to recruit a frontliner. A shepherd... What's the only odds we can make a shepherd a backliner, guys? I guess we hire him and we look, we hope. He's either fodder or backliner. Uh, I think he's just fodder, right? He's just fodder. And we just give him a club and throw him up front. 45 base range skill, weasel. Weasel's not bad, but it's also not helpful. I would rather have him soaking attacks than trying to get, like... Trying to force him to be something he's not going to be. The Thief is a good hire, but we don't have equipment for people. Uh, going to 12 can be risky if you go to 12 early. I, I just don't think it pays off very well for us. It can be risky because it's going to scale up contracts in your pay. If, you like, if you're intending on playing riskier and like running at stuff, going to 12 as soon as possible is great. But that's not what we're doing this run. We're going to fight against nine cutthroats. And this is what I mean about risky. Because we hired that shepherd, we have to fight one more enemy. Uh, we do want to fight them at night. Because they have two archers and we have, a, we have technically one, but effectively zero. This monk doesn't do anything. They're going to sit back on us. So I'm going to move my shield men forward first. And we can keep a two tile gap. We don't need to close all the way. One, two, three, four. And we can try to kind of bait them to stretch out on these shield guys. Uh, I don't think they're going to take the bait because they outrange us. So I don't think there's a lot we can do. These guys I don't care about if they die at all. So I, I think I don't. I don't really like stack bodies down here. I want to stack bodies up north and win this part of the fight. Uh, I think these two guys dying is an acceptable loss for this fight. So I'm going to move them forward kind of aggressively and see if the enemies will like move out of position to chase them. I don't expect them to. It is worth a try. I can try to take these high ground tile. I could try to take a high ground tile with Gustav and Shield Wall. I think that's my play. Although I, I don't have setup time, right? If I just sit here and like derp, they have three slingers on high ground. They're gonna yeet me. 
They're gonna yeet me. So I think we have to just kind of get in there. This guy is also maybe an acceptable loss. Uh, maybe next turn we can try to push this man off high ground and claim that tile. This is my best fighter right now. But I want to keep this formation. This buckler, I, this guy's a buckler because he's kind of out of position, like exposed there. We'll see if they take the bait. Okay, they do take the bait a little bit, kind of. Uh, this this tile is very scary if I go here. I don't want to put a man here. Okay, now I can. Now they've abandoned the high ground for some unknown reason. Heart mode is not particularly valuable. And then this guy can... Can I get here? Try to stun. But this guy is dead, but that's fine. This is this is a fodder brother we just hired. He's an acceptable boss. Which we planned on these two guys potentially dying at the beginning of the fight. This guy will be able to attack before he has a turn, before he bleeds out, maybe once or twice. And the monk is just not doing much, right? I think we just have to let him attack. This is a Fuga, he's valuable. Kind of hold his AP. Um, if I stun this guy, I can get on top of... The Archer, right? We should get on top of this Archer as well. This guy running away should break the morale a little bit. Now, this guy's kind of low. If I put him here, he's against two enemies. I think that's kind of risky. I think I just... He's also a valuable brother, so I think I just kill this guy. I think catching this slinger right now is not worth risking a brother for. Now I can, now I can catch this slinger. This guy will get away. We will not, will not be able to get his spear. Ooh, I think this is worth. I think I think Eric is fine against this guy, especially with that buckler. He's likely to at least be able to block a couple attacks. I'm just try to kill this, kill these guys as fast as we can. Maybe cause a morale break here. Trying to preserve our armor. Uh, keep that tempo up between fights by minimizing the damage we take. Okay, pretty clean fight, right? Everybody got a level. Um, the first couple levels are super important. So, the game counts a single level 6 brother is equal to two level 1 brothers. Let's find the dwarf, dwarf here. We said we're making him a stun bot, right? Uh, I think we can give him Colossus. I don't. I, at 57 hit points max right now, it makes it to level four. Colossus was correct. Smud gets dodge. Dodge just is just so powerful to take right away at level four. He's gonna get what is this like 16 defense out of it, melee and ranged. Massive, right? The Hartman here is not very good. He also rolled a two here. So we get a couple options here. Uh, if we need damage, we can take fast adaptation. Uh, 52 attack against an enemy with 15. Fast adaptation is probably worth, against an enemy with 15 defense, it's probably worth between 8 and 11 melee skill off the top of my head. We could pull a chart out and check. So moving him from like 35% chance to like, let's say 44% chance is about a 35% increase in his damage. If we give him Colossus, he gets plus 15 hit HP. That's probably a 20% increase in his survivability. He has decent armor. 
and he does not have a sword or spear. Uh, I think all those things speak for fast adaptation. If he didn't have his armor, I would consider nine lives. Um, if we were fighting like marksmen, I'd consider Colossus or nine lives. If his brother was better, I would consider Colossus. It's not a brother we really need to keep very, for very long. Iric as well just gets dodge. And we just kind of blindly take HP attack and defense. Gustav here. Gustav's pretty trash. His job is to sit on the flank and probably not probably die. So we have two competing perks for Gustav. We have uh, Colossus and Nine Lives. Colossus again is good if they make it to like level four. Nine Lives is good if you're trying to maximize your economy and you're trying to like get the most value out of the brother. 57 hit points and, a, and max means that I think Colossus is better. If this guy had gotten hit twice last fight and only had like 25 hit points, then Nine Lives would be better, right? Because Nine Lives gives you a static, like you survive one more hit and you get bonus defense for a turn. So I think in this situation, uh, the Colossus is going to do more. Because he's, again, he's at, max, he's at max HP. He doesn't have armor. Um, Eugene here. I think we're not fighting Marksman yet, so we can greed for student. So student, I normally take on backliners. Which, this guy's a backliner now. If I'm not yet fighting enemy ranged attackers. And all those things hold true. So for a tank, we take defense and fatigue at every level. And then we split between HP and Resolve. So let's go ahead and name these guys by their title. Forge Tank. This monk is our first banner. Uh, I guess throw banner. This guy can be a stun bot, right? But he's kind of foddery. Smud. Dodge quick hands. And we could do a build round if we find like a Bardiche or something. We could still do like dodge reach advantage. But dodge quick hands is generally a better build. A Fuga is also dodge quick hands. Hartmut is, I guess, uh, fast adaptation fodder. Eirik is another dodge quick hands. This guy is just some kind of, he's probably a fast adaptation fodder as well, right? So we're actually kind of deep with fodder. We have four fodder brothers. I think two to three is probably correct. Uh, fodder tank. So that means quests are going to be maybe a little more challenging than it's profitable. Um, I think a 53 attack of spear is going to be better than this. Uh, better sling. And I, think I will keep and repair this some of these nomad slings in case we need them. How does this safe compare to these axes? Five more discs. These guys have enough attack, they don't need them. This guy can use a, a sword. He can replace these backpack bucklers with backpack of dragas. You get a buckler because I don't like you. Because <gasps> this guy's not high value, right? So like, why give him the good stuff? Now some people would put a shield on this guy. I think, it's, I think that's wrong. Because if we put a shield on our bad brothers, the AI will target our strong brothers. We've, we've forced the AI off targeting our good brothers generally because they have they have dodge now. And this just defeats the purpose of like <laughs> trying to keep our good guys alive. We also have our good guys kind of in a clump. We have left Iric a bit on his own. So they can support each other. That means we expect to win the portion of the fight we send the barbs to. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think we change anything else here. I think I'm fine with the weapon setup. And there wasn't anything we care to buy here. We could try to push some trade goods through. But I think we're going to make like 20 gold per trade good. I think it's just not worth. We don't have a lot to repair. That's not worth waiting half the night. This is a, a good fight. Six cutthroats and a slinger. We'd like to get a real backliner. It's the only thing we really lack. Uh, but I think we'll go north immediately anyways. Backliner, no backliner. 
Is there anything we can do to break up their formation? I think we can just blow them up, right? I think we just get in there and blow them up, like... We don't overthink this fight. I'm gonna put the shield bros in front of my double grippers, but they tank the nomad sling here. Yeah, they split themselves up, and the raider a lot of raiders tend to do that. They'll like keep a reserve to protect a slinger. Not really worth it for them, but hey, I don't mind. Uh, this is a dangerous tile to go without a shield. So if I put Heartmut here, I'd have to take out the shield. And he just doesn't have the stats for that. Alright, they're going to move here for us. This tile is kind of dangerous, yeah. I don't like giving enemy two-on-ones against my brothers that I plan to keep. I like to keep them in one-on-one -on -one matchups only. Maybe we can catch this guy before he runs away. Let's see. Nope, he's going to get away. Are we good dog to catch him? It's probably worth some experience. The monk has the dog and is not yet acted. Oh, come on, doggo. Maybe the doggo catches next turn, so let's try to get people in position. Okay, doggo catches. A little bit of extra experience. I hope he doesn't kill the doggo, but this is what the doggo is for, so. We either keep the, we either never use, never use the doggo for roleplay reasons because we don't like we don't like doggos getting hurt. We get any valuable loot, any like usable loot here. These safes are worth selling uh, for this stun bot. It was a little bit better. We got a knife on somebody. Hafuga got dodge. Uh, what do we give to Jamil? Fast imitation fodder. We could, we could give one guy Adrenaline, but we don't have a two-hander, so Adrenaline doesn't do much on one-handers, you just spam out. We actually don't have a decent weapon for him to take fast adaptation on. He has really bad resolve and hit points. I honestly, I'd probably just dismiss this guy, right? We can't make him a tank because he's got no hit points or resolve. Fast adaptation with a shield, with like a sword, is just total hot garbage. Um, yeah, what do we do with this guy then? It's basically no use for this brother. We could try to make him like a fodder tank, but he's... Yeah, I guess we try to make him a fodder tank and just take Colossus. That means he moves to the flank, right? He gets a spear and moves to the flank. If he dies, he dies. And everybody's got a backpack shield. Oh, I could, I could use one shield in the middle of my formation. Who's more valuable between these two? Probably Spine. Got five more defense. Insecure is not that bad on tanks. I did get a hat. Who gets a hat? Any... We'll just keep this for uh, our memory's sake. We'll keep stun bats on these guys if we need a dagger or raider or something. There's a couple guys that can try to stun. Because they don't have daggers yet. That's about the best we can do with the gear. Out of tools. Hopefully we get here before nightfall.
This is a probably decent. Can we go Ross Sanan for 140 and then buy more tools and then go north? Rideware has nothing to buy. Armorer. Do we buy anything on armor worth doing Caravan for? We do know that there are no que no quests in Rastanon for us to make money off of. Uh, I think we just, if we're not going to repair, I think we just take the Caravan's help. We don't have enough money to buy anything here. So because we don't have tools, at least we get to buy tools here. Which, uh, okay, nice. <laughs> that was super lucky. Uh, now I have an option, guys. We can abandon this quest to hit this caravan. From Friedwald. Where's Friedwald? It's likely to have... a lumber. We lose 100 renown. We get a good fight. Um, man. Do we have enough to hire the brigand yet? Yeah, I think we can't afford to lose renown. I think we can't afford- we lose 100 renown. I think that's going to delay Brigand by way too much, so... Thank you, the Foul Falcon. Yeah, we want to get the Brigand as soon as possible in this start. And if we if we abandon this mission, we're going to lose 100 renown. That's like four missions to get it back. Four Orcs and a Berserker. I have one net. Uh, this is not a great fight, guys. Um, so we have three brothers we can afford to lose, though. So I think that makes it more manageable. We have a net, we have a dog, we have two southern caravan guards. I think this is okay. Yeah, orcs are like the worst fight to get early, before you're ready for them. So we probably just play with the caravan guards, we see what they do and we kind of mirror them. All right, so, the orcs are going to crash into us and likely stun. If we don't move up. Uh, Hartwood is not a guy we want to lose. I do not want to put him against a cleaver. I almost want to just sit back. And make my... I think the AI tank this. Spearwall is not bad against orcs. So let's maybe think about spearwalling. Oh, we probably lose some of these guys. These are the shield guys are the guys we can afford to lose. All right, so this guy, too bad he doesn't have nine lives. Uh, the Cleaver guy could potentially two-shot my Nimble Bros, so we have to we have to kind of stay away from him. See if we can. <laughs> Great rotate, man! Great rotate. Very, I, I very much appreciate that. I don't have great plays right now. If anybody who goes down here is likely to die. So I need to play my team uh, north of these two fodder. Um, anybody I put here is also likely to die. I just, I don't have good good plays available to me right now. I have, I have a host of bad plays I could potentially make. So let's just let the fight develop a bit. This guy's going to get one shot when he gets hit. The flail ignores the shield bonus, but not the shield wall bonus. So, there's at least that. I think we have to get in here though, right? We could try using... Let's see what the, what the conscript does. We could try using shield wall to push this guy out of position. That could be our best bet. Alright, he's gonna... They're gonna out of, like move themselves out of position on their own. I, I just going down here is just a death sentence, right? This guy just has to be held in reserve. I hate I hate to do it, but and here is where like nine lives would be better against this orc weapon. Let's let, make them burn their AP first on the shield walls, and then we'll try to close in. Uh, there's no point in this guy shield wall and they'll just ignore him. Alright, rip. Uh, fine stun bot. 
And we expected that out of this Cleaver. Cleaver's super dangerous. I still want to focus this guy down first, though, even though the Cleaver's dangerous. Uh, obviously, this guy is super, super dangerous. We don't have a way to control him. We just probably just let him go on the donkey, honestly. Maybe they run away if we kill all the other orcs. We have we have no solution to the prop to the berserker problem, other than trying to keep the the AI between us and him. Yeah, that's that's our solution. Is um, we have gnats. We have gnats. We can try to set up on him. He could. With all these stacks he has, he could easily just kill us, so... Uh, there are multiple conscripts still to, ch to chip him down. I don't really want to have... I'd rather let the conscripts die than use the net. Nets are very valuable. The conscripts don't have any value to me. If I could daze them, it'll also help with this. I, I just don't need to move my guys in into melee, right? There's still two conscripts there. And now we probably want to think about trying to last hit him next turn for the experience. So we're playing for last hit here. Did they one-shot him on their turn? I'm going to wait till this guy goes. If, I'd rather miss this experience than lose a brother. Yeah, I, I definitely can't kill him before they act. So we just have to hope they don't get the kill. All right, now we now it's our chance. We get as our window. Get that sweet sweet orc chain. Okay, we lost. We actually, we kind of wanted to lose these guys because they weren't adding value to our team. So I am gonna dismiss this guy with a permanent injury. I don't want a bad mood going into a fight. Uh, the reason why is at least we get the drill sergeant active. Now, we lost both of our shield guys. I do like to keep two shield guys. This guy already has fast adaptation, though. So I feel like it's probably not correct to kind of change his job description. We're just going to keep jamming like this. Forge tank is going to take a while to come online. It looks like he's rolling worse in... Resolve and hit points. We'll go ahead and throw a gift in to resolve. And we have two options here. We have executioner or gifted. Which do we think adds more damage? With 43 at range skill, I'm pretty sure we need to take gifted to get that going. <laughs> He's just not going to hit anything at all otherwise. And his fatigue is kind of hot garbage too. Yeah, 4% attack or execute. Execution is... We also don't have throwing weapons, which means he's unlikely to, like, actually two-shot stuff because of of uh, Executioner. Um, These axes are kind of dumpy. Let's, we get some nice weapon upgrades here. Who has the ridiculous fatigue? Hafuga? Guys, these weapons... Do we one-shot stuff with this? I guess. I guess this is a small improvement. I don't really like orc weapons, but we're comparing orc weapons to a tier 1 crude axe. This is actually probably the best weapon we have right now, this Morning Star. This guy will get a shield on the flank. Uh, if he dies, he dies. We need another fodder tank. Yeah. I don't want to use this weapon for long, but it's probably probably good now. Any armors we can switch out? I can repair this. It's a 20. We don't have any, any health. So actually, all of these guys did pretty well. The ones that survived. All right. uh, fight in 9. Uh, we did get a couple level ups since the last time we took this fight. A couple gear upgrades. Of course he takes my high ground, right? So we're going to move into position to try to be able to get some deeps down next turn. This guy will be surrounded. They'll kind of flow around to him. 
But I do want to shield all these flankers in this situation. Him too. But let's think. If I shield well here, this guy will fill into this tile and then attack my brother I care about. So if we want the AI to go after Hartmut, we do not shield wall. And we prefer the AI attacking our dumpy brothers, so our good ones. Uh, against our lightly armored guys without nimble, I think the bleed is more dangerous than the Nomad Club. But we have five more chances to hit this guy. So let's take the damage option. I could move here, and then I have a two-on-one on, on a value brother. I could move here and not attack. I could move here and pull a shield out. Moving here and pulling a shield out is reasonable. Uh, but then I'm probably going to get three on one to my, one of my best brothers. I think we just hold turn. Alright. And we try to focus these guys down. Yeah, that's why we were thinking about attacking the cleaver guy first. Okay, that's okay. Obviously, we don't get experience when the AI kills them, so it's a little disappointing to hit a guy three times and have the AI last hit. But sometimes it'd be like that. Uh, I can put him here and try to kill him. Yeah, okay, Orc Chain is, Orc Chain is, is uh, MVP, right? He's going to take another hit from us. Another kill from us. And we want to zone this conscript away from this guy so that we can get the last hit. Slings use no ammo, so we're free to just sling away. Okay, good fight, right? Good fight. I don't have any use to keep these weapons. I keep this armor. I guess I keep the feathered hat. I probably keep a spear... We can backpack and a drag I want. A drag is a really good backpack shield because they're quite light. I guess it's the same as a as one of these. You don't need a backpack shield. We'll keep a shield for the next guy. I'll keep this hood and this armor. We'll repair this stuff. Don't need to repair this then, do I? The rest of the stuff is just for sale. Maybe buy tools here. We're going to pay a premium for buying them now. Um, this food is quite cheap. I think we can make money trading this food. In the city. Then we can look for range guys. Brawlers are quite valuable. We do need some kind of flanker. So let's grab the brawler. Uh, pretty viable dodge quick hands guy. So let's go ahead and give him the gear we've been reserving. And I think these orc cleavers are better than safes, especially with 80 fatigue and the kind of like the determined point. Give him a dagger. All right, we're good to go. So this guy's just kind of been demoted to fodder. And he's going to stay that way. I think we're ready to get hit, go hit a raid. Now the same stack of brigands is starting, starting to look attractive. We have two caravan guards to help us. Uh, we're in decent shape. Yeah, I think this is. A, I think we lose maybe two to three guys, but we get some brigand gear. So the, the trick for this fight will be controlling who we lose. Uh, if we just lose the three fodder, I think it's a it's a win. If we lose any of the brothers we intend to keep, I think this is probably a loss. Uh, I don't actually care about this leather armor. It's not a big enough upgrade from what we have to be worth risking bros for. So how are we playing this fight? We actually probably give this guy high ground. Which means that this, this, these tiles are off limits. Can we focus down? Guido here is starting with low armor. So this tile is probably death for Guido. I think Guido survives here. If we want to put him there. I think Hartmut can go here. And we can focus him. Yeah, he'll have to come off his high ground eventually though. This guy is kind of dangerous. Um, I think we let the conscripts engage on him. Yeah, we'll let the conscripts fight him. Is this tile safe to go on? I think this tile's fine. I'll put Eric here. Eric should survive. 
He has he had the two backliners supporting him there. Oh, nice. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna just move this guy around the flank and try to last hit this this brother next turn. Same thing here. He's gonna he's gonna hold in reserve and try to last hit. If anybody steps here, they just die, right? Hopefully. And let's get my backliners ready to support this part of the fight. This flail was actually pretty good early. Hafuga. The javelins are very valuable if we can get them. We'll, we'll purchase them if we can't get them. Javelins are, are quite cheap for the value they offer. So here I think we move in. Brigands do not have quick hands. This guy we don't really care if we lose, right? He's a fodder. Okay. And this armor is just not worth enough to take any sort of risk for. Boom. Boom. The chainmail I would have like maybe risked a fodder for. But I think people people overvalue early armor. It's like a, a third of a hit. It's not worth losing even a fodder for at this point. That was a it was risking it was like a 10% chance to lose a fodder to get the armor, then it's worth it. Alright, so we do take an injury on Jamil. We don't care about the injury. We get some nice weapons. Yeah, Brawler, Brawler did well there. Uh, fodder tank. So he took this injury, that's pretty bad. We're choosing nine lives are gifted. Uh one to two days. 42 HP at this, so this might even just heal before the next fight. So I think because it might heal before the next fight, we don't need to take nine lives. Uh, I think we could choose between nine lives and shield master level four on him. And you keep getting hit in the head, Hafugo. Let's give you this. Uh, this is 75 armor. This is 80. Uh, get some upgraded weapons here on people. These guys have pretty like manageable armor. This helm is kind of bad. This is a 50. Do I have a better helm? I don't yet. Um, this armor is 65. Let's give the guys we care about better armor. I kind of have a shortage of, uh, these are 40s as well, of helms, don't we? But we'll kind of get helms naturally as we play. And flail. Um, I think this guy could be a flail duelist, right? Fast adaptation of Flail Duelist is actually a pretty strong early game build. That means we want to fodder outside here. He's level 3, so he's starting to actually add value to the team. That means we don't really want to risk losing him. Is this better than a Falchion, guys? It's probably close. It's probably close. I'm going to keep this Falchion. Over this club on this guy. Some more backpack shields on people. I could give this guy a backpack spear instead of a shield. I think he. Could, I think we can keep out of melee based on epic enemies we're fighting now, though. I think yeah, we just we just save like one of these spears for a fodder tank, right? Yeah, we got a lot. Those this caravan has been great for us. We got two good fights. I think we just can probably buy tools. Armor. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> look at these famed items, guys. So, I, it's a meme, but like, it just always seems like you get famed items when you're broke. Um, we don't really want to hire now. This rat catch would be a good deal. I think we just pick up these, th these items. I think we actually make money on trading this stuff. Yeah, there's no like broken helms or anything. You buy a pitchfork. We don't have a guy to use it. I think we just wait. All right. This is the same fight we just did, but we don't have help. Uh, how is our armor situation? Nine tools and supplies. What do we think about this fight? We probably take this, right? Two to three poach. Yeah. After this fight, we take it. Yeah, I want to sell, but I want to get, I want to sell food in the city though. We won't get a good price in that town. What do we care about out of this fight, guys? If we look at this, any gear we want, 
We could try to match up our flail against this guy for the armor. Uh, this guy's kind of injured. We need to be careful with Jamil. I could put him here. I get to put four enemies, four guys on him. So I think I put my three barbs around him to try to just blow him up, and then my tank here. Uh, let's put the who is the, the let's put the injured guy in the high ground. Give him the most protection. A guy here will get zerged, so I want to put my tank here. So there's like a reason each guy's going where, even though we're in a line, there's still a reason why everyone's going where they're going. We still have the dog too. All right, unfortunately, we should have given Jamil nine lives. He's probably dead already. But sometimes it'd be like that though. And I think Guido's already out of the fight too. We don't need to risk him for this fight, do we? Let's see how this turn goes for us. If it goes poorly, we can we can consider risking Guido. I think we kill him. I think we kill this guy. 19%. What are the chances we kill him? Almost zero. He kills him. Now I think the fight's good enough we can bail Guido out. Um... Do I drop this dog? I think I drop the dog and try to save Jamil. Jamil's worth maybe like a thousand gold just because he's got levels. And also the fight's gonna start to turn against us and we lose brothers, so. Dog putting in work. Okay, boom. Do I try to stun here? 63%. So this is like a 42% chance to stun and do half damage. If I hit him, he probably can't even attack twice because it'll drain his fatigue out. I think I'm better off just hitting him. I, I need helms in this fight, so I don't think dagging is that valuable. I'm going to drop this guy's shield so he can... Maybe get us more double grip damage in here. Uh, I do. We're gonna risk losing this guy here, which is he's super valuable. So, and I don't want to match this guy up against the scram sex. I want to be ready to maybe take the high ground next turn with them. The scram sex is very powerful against uh, unarmored bros, and that's fine. This guy can take his shield back out, right? Seems like a waste to use all those action points to kill this injured guy, but... I don't really have another option. Uh, I could kill this guy and hope for a resolve check here. With a shield, this flail is just not going to do any damage. I think we probably just lose heart mode here. I think that's kind of just what's going to happen. I could net here. We also have... The net's always fatigue. He can't, he can't attack and net. I think two attacks are worth more than a net. Given that he has that fast adaptation stack as well. Yeah, that guy dies. That's fine. It's fine. Uh, do, I t do I dagger this chainmail, guys? If I net, I can dagger the chainmail, and it's probably a uh, reasonable value. Do I even need to net? I don't get the option of netting, right? Oof. Okay, we're not going to try... Do we still dagger? Yeah, we can still dagger. He... Let's see if my last dagger guy can get a hit. I can't. I'm not going to risk losing a brother. I'll just kill him. Alright, so we get three armors. Uh, one is probably from our guy that died. So, I'm... <sighs> You took a permanent injury, and that's just what happens to people on the flanks in the early game. Uh, and we'll just get rid of him. So, do we keep this guy? He doesn't really have any defense, right? Let's go ahead and upgrade people's armors. Uh, Chainmail. 
chainmail, uh, leather. So we have like a couple decent armors, right? I think we need two more shield fodder. Uh, then we're gonna go raid. Forge tank. This guy's like level 8 or 9 before he's usable, so. He's not rolling resolve, unfortunately. Monk. We have Colossus. We're starting to fight poachers. We haven't started to fight marksmen yet. Marksmen will generally start showing up around day 15. So we would need Colossus to want to play into marksmen with him. Uh, he does have a backpack, shield, and a dog. So we have a couple ops. We have Quick Hands. We have Colossus. We have Pathfinder. We have Executioner. Throw, throw, we're going to take Throwing Master at 5 and Nimble at 7. Um, there's also Fortified Mine and Rally, right? We're going to want those perks too. So I think we actually take Rally now. Uh, right? <sighs> I think we actually take Rally. Why are we taking Rally? At level 5 is taking Throwing. At 6 we can take Fort. At 7, Nimble. At 8 he's taking Duelist and like Duelist Fierce for 8 and 9. Yeah, I guess... How long until we get the achievement? I better just take Rally. I know it's a dead perk now, but... Uh, we're gonna need it pretty soon. This is a friendly caravan. We can just sell in the morning here. Then we'll go start hitting caravans now. Unless this is a follow the tracks, then we'll do it. So I marked all the stuff I plan to keep. The kite shield is actually worth keeping, right? These axes need to get repaired before they get sold. We're out of tools though, so we may even just rest in town overnight and repair some of this stuff. I'll keep... I already marked two slings to keep. And then we'll sell the expensive foods we bought. I'm gonna buy two stacks of tools. Uh, now we can buy a hunter if we see one. A 4.7k Swordmaster is not awful. There's some decent value here. I don't think any of them are quite worth it though. This is probably a good, a good easy fight. We do have... I want to heal people though. I don't think it's worthwhile to like just run into our death here because people are like half health. We can burn a half day. And then we'll do this. Uh, this quest is, is a fairly straightforward fight. So, Flagellants have good resolve. I think we want good resolve guys to hold flanks. So let's go ahead and grab grave, a Grave Robber and a Flagellant. Flagellants have the problem of low HP. Okay. Uh, yeah, this guy can be a nimble tank. So now we have to start thinking of, is it worth trying to keep some of these guys alive? We already have a forge tank that's like close to being usable. Uh, think for the follow. This guy is, what can we do with Engelbert here? We can make this guy a nimble tank. These two stars here are kind of a bait, right? He's only going to have 79 melee skill. Um, we're doing raiders. We're doing raiders. This guy could be like a sword duelist or a tank. They're both a nimble tank. They're both like decent mid-game builds. I think it depends on what we find. Um... Yeah, I think I think we honestly he might just be stuck holding a flank right now. <sighs> Do we babysit him for a nimble tank? That's our question. I think with two serviceable nimble tank guys. Are we fine risking him for these fights? I think if he survives, he survives. We already we already have this one tank we're babying, right? If we're babying two tanks, it's just gonna be hard to have any kind of like to have our fights go well. So 
It's a decision point. I'm not confident my decision is correct. This guy could go in the back and just AFK and leech experience. Or we can make him f be up front and try to be kind of careful with him. Our fights aren't really stable until these guys get level 7. And they're not close yet. I don't, yeah, we can't baby two tanks at a time, guys. It's just it's too costly. I think these fights are short enough that the orc weapons are usable. So we're not able to find any kind of like hunter for a backline. Uh, it looks like there's just zero hunter's cabins in the south in this map, and that, that often happens. So how are we going to play this fight? Are we going to play this fight differently at all based on our brothers? I'm going to commit more resources to this portion of the fight in an attempt to keep this tank alive. That's my only, only way I'll play it a little differently. Here, um, next turn I can move in to kill to kill these guys, right? This is my starting monk. We're just trying to force him to be a thrower. Throwers are like the best damage in the back line. So, like, what else are we gonna do with the with the starting monk? Uh, <laughs> looks like our plan down here did not go. Our our plan to keep this guy alive did not did not work. But we knew it was a risk, so... Okay, maybe he lives. Pierce Cheek, I don't care about his fatigue recovery. Boom, that's, that's a starting monk with like 38 range attack. It's just like... <laughs> Just basically anybody can be a fast adaptation thrower. You don't need range seal for it. Throwing weapons give you plus 20 attack. You get probably plus 10 from fast adaptation, plus 4 from gifted. By the time you're like level 4, like 5, you're strong with any brother as a thrower. I, I, as long as it's not like some like drunkard sword master. Okay. Pretty clean fight. I mean, we started day 1. So right now we're trying to, to for raiding, yeah. Right now we're just trying to find a couple more brothers before we head back north. Like, we, we want to have enough money we can sustain ourselves in the north. But yeah, we we have been raiding since the game started. Um, shield dagger, forty five skill. We don't get much value out of the dagger. Bandage, also low value. I guess dagger is better than nothing. Or I could just use sling, huh? Without quick hands, though, sling's also not that much value. And then he's got this net. And the fights are probably too short for us to need slings anyways. I mean, orc weapons are good if you're not taking hard fights. Orc weapons do not do well in fights that go to, like, turn four. Because you're going to be fatigued out. Koningsfield, three days northeast. Uh, I mean, we're obviously, we can't do this, right? That's got to be some kind of, like, hostile city. I don't even see Koningsfield. I, oh, it's up here? Yeah, we can't. I think it's time to go raid, guys. I think it's time to go raid. I think we're going to go to Steinerm here. So do we not field fodder for peasant fights? We just put our, our experience on the brothers we intend to keep. I guess this guy getting like nine lives is relevant. Yeah, these guys getting nine lives is probably kind of relevant. Yeah, it was like bandage versus dagger versus like another net. Versus like sling. I love these guys. Oh, the pitchfork is actually kind of value. Obviously, this guy has like no reason for him to fight. We also don't need to waste ammo here, all right?
That was a, I tried to stun him just so he didn't like get to attack. Just trying to save tools. Um, is it worth going quick hands at level five for a pitchfork? We have to consider that it might be. It's quick hands or student. Student gets them to nimble a couple a little bit faster. So I would probably go question mark, underdog, nimble, fearsome, zerk, frenzy. I guess we do go quick hands at five and skip student. I like Underdog. Underdog is optional on this build. Uh, there's like three competing perks. So this build is Colossus, Gifted, Dodge, uh, Quick Hands, Nimble, Fearsome, Zerk, Frenzy. And then you're choosing two of the following three perks. Weapon Mastery, either Pull or More Axe, Pathfinder, or Underdog. I think Underdog is better than Weapon Mastery on Nimble, guys. Uh, if you're Fatigue Neutral, you have to take bo both. But the only thing we would get is we could get 5 AP attacks if we have a Bill Hook. And there's value in that. Like taking Pathfinder Pull Arm and not taking Underdog is fine, especially on low defense guys. Uh, underdog opens up lines of play for moderate defense guys. It means that you're safer fighting into two or three enemies. So. You're kind of choosing among those three. I think Axe Mastery is just generally not a lot of value. It's like three, like maybe like four average fatigue a turn. Uh, probably less than Pathfinder. And then usually, like, usually fights are decisioned before you run out of fatigue on your on your nimble guys. And that's only after you have Zerk Frenzy. So like, I think Underdog lets me fight into two or three enemies if I have to. Um, especially if I'm backpacking a shield and have like dodge, I'm likely to survive those situations with underdog and die without it. Whereas like again, Pathfinder pull arm is like, you get a couple more attacks per fights on bad terrain. That's good. That's good. But maybe if this guy has really bad defense, I would think underdog might not be worth it because you just can't make the aggressive plays even with underdog. They're, they're all valid. They're all valid. There's, and there's times to take each. But Underdog is a perk that I, I I value for the way I play. Underdog is stronger when you get unlucky. So for like win streak style thinking about the game, where you're trying to win every single game you start, it has more value. Whereas like if you're willing if you're willing to play like 20 or 30 runs to get like one victory, like whatever you consider a victory, then it loses value. Because when things go your way, you just don't go your way, you just restart. And like if, if that's and that's a that's the way pe a lot of people play. Uh, things like underdog are, are just worse under the under that circumstance. The sword's a bit more dangerous than the hand axe here. For for nimble guys, axe mastery is not a lot of value. For battle forge like fatigue neutral guys, axes are the best are the best weapons in general for two handers. So Colossus, we go Gifted, and we'll go Dodge next level. I'm checking Steinarm to see if we could potentially buy a Hunter. Uh, looks like no. I would also maybe buy a Bonk if there's a Bonk. Okay, so we buy a 2.5k Bonk. Oh, let's see. Can we afford a 2.5k bonk? I think it might be one more trip so we can afford this. This is a very, very powerful weapon. Uh, this and a hunter, I think, are generally your first, your your best two buys. It's kind of a higher price. Normally, you can get them for like 2.2k. We're also selling it not a great price if we pick this up here. Let's sell the low value stuff and take a look. Yeah, we could sell 500, 800. We have, we have 300 gold left. We only have two days of pay. Yeah, I could sell these. I could sell this stuff and have two days of pay. 
the, so here's our question is does it open up fights if i buy this can i take fights i otherwise couldn't i think the answer is probably no i think we can't fight supply caravans i think it's likely to be here when we get back i think if i sell these things i can get about 100 gold more in a city so i'm probably paying like 2.6k for this and i think uh I think that's not a great a great bargain i think we have a pretty good time against caravans even without it we also probably want to hire the raider first so i think it closes off two i think it, it closes off two lines of play it closes off hiring the brigand closes off hiring a hunter it does not open up supply caravans uh yeah i, I think it just doesn't and it's also not a great price and it's a fairly common weapon so i think we just keep it moving I think we're not, I think we're not hiring a brigand to be our next fight. Uh, I don't really value flails that much. I think the stamina problems, the stamina issues are too problematic for me to really want them. One, two, and we can just fight this in a line, right? Like this isn't a particularly challenging fight. We don't need to like waste brain cells here, as I like to put it. We just get this fight over with. They'll charge at us because we have this thrower. Once, As soon as we move the thrower in range, range they should charge. Should. Um, what's your range skill? 50. Why are they not charging? I can move one up one more tile, I guess. Yeah, let's move up one more tile. If they want to sit back. I don't really want to waste ammo on them. Though... Which is which is a, a a better risk? Do we waste ammo to make them charge, or do we just get in there? I think we just get in there, right? I don't think they threaten us enough that we're spending a ton of like a ton of ammo forcing them to get at us. I'm going to try to stun to drop his shield wall. Okay. We don't really have an armor shortage, though. Everyone already has armor. Flails don't scale well as, in as the difficulty goes up. Because they have too many fatigue problems. This guy's a fodder tank. I think because we're taking easier fights, we can kind of greed for Colossus, as, as opposed to Nine Lives. Uh, Smud here. Debating Quick Hands versus Student. Um, I think I just go Student, right? I'm really going to take Quick Hands to use a Pitchfork and delay getting Nimble. That seems wrong. Seems wrong. Are we bothering with attack on this guy? This guy can get to. We could make this guy a fatigue. We could make this guy like a fatigue neutral guy with uh with backstabber maybe. Drunkard's pretty valuable. I am I'm gonna go for a damage build on this guy. Backstabber is not a great perk. I don't like taking it, but sometimes it's, it is the best perk to take on a brother. So any footprints headed this way are likely to be a friendly caravan, so we don't need to chase footprints coming from the north. Again, this is a fight we don't need to like, waste brain cells on, right? The problem with flails is in hard fights, you're out of stamina by like turn three, and then you just lose the fight. <laughs> if you take re recover, is a really bad perk. You don't want to like you don't want to like force yourself to take recover. Yeah, exactly. So flails are okay for farming gear. I don't 
I think it's worthwhile. Yeah, so this is a fight where, like, there's a lot of loot. It's eight footmen. I don't think we can fight eight footmen. I think they set up a shield ball and just chip us down. They have... Okay, the trading cannon will fight. Can we get them to split? The trading cannon should be faster, because it's smaller. Oh, here's a big one from Newmark. This is a good fight for us, this 10. We'll grab this one first. Yeah, you, if, if you're willing to, to restart a bunch, you can fight some of the... You can fight the guards if you're willing to restart a little bit. And like, get a lot better snowball going. I think that you know, some people in chat are running the same runs. And a, a lot of you, if you're running your runs on chat, you're going to be faster than this. Because we tend to play for consistency. And uh, it's not always the most impressive results. But I like being able to win every run. At least trying. It's a hard game. And you can't always make it. Yeah, I mean, but Iron Man restarts and no restarts are different. That's what I'm saying. If you consider every time you push start game and then you don't clear a legendary to be a loss and count your win rate, you can think of the game a little differently. So Eric here is a bit out of position. Do we have the damage to support him? Look, this is a guy with no range still. He's got 70% chance to hit. So if you, when I say restart, I mean like, do you want to replay the first 15 days 10 times? Yeah. And, and it's like, it's about consistency, right? That's that's the way we approach the game is, we would like to play 10 runs and, and clear a legendary in all 10 of them. Uh, and so things like fighting multiple caravan guards on day one, you're not going to be consistent with. Even fighting one is like sus. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's the wrong way to play. I'm just saying it's not the way I play the game. But you can really out you can really outscale the game if you if you chain restart. Yeah, you, 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 this is this is a starting monk with no range skill. He starts like 36 range skill. And for this fight into these guys, I will just sit back and use my ammo. We have plenty of ammo. We only have one thrower. I think you automatically get donkey experience once you kill everything. But they're, they're not much experience at all. They're like 30 or 40. They're probably about the same as a peasant. Like, you get to also think that the whole time you're hitting the donkeys, if these guys are hitting us, it's not really worth. We've only killed one. That's fine, though. If we kill one before melee clash, that's fine. Oh, this guy's injured as well. This is where quick hands even with a pitchfork would be nice. So maybe we do go quick hands instead of student on one of the guys. Maybe the one with the lowest uh, melee skill. Or d melee defense will skip underdog on. And go pathfinder pull arm. Any good shots? I, mean, I can hold. I can wait till the shield balls end, right? They're going to run out of fatigue eventually. If they run out of fatigue, we can just zerg them. could also use this war fork. This is just my tank back here. Like, he's not... <laughs> not actually doing damage with it. I guess we're waiting out the fatigue. These guys can be dangerous. Like, this spear can, can clip to my guys pretty quickly. Injuries are expensive. Tools are expensive. All right, he's going to drop his shield while we're going to be able to eat him. Next turn, next turn. Do I, this guy's got a little more fatigue. I don't really want to give up my high ground. This is And this speaks towards backpacking a sling. Because slings don't use ammo. We could just sit up here all day and sling. This guy's going to push recover and then I'll get to throw two jabs at him. 
without shield wall. I could also just close on him. Their whole team is exhausted. We're 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 fresh. I think there's a argument for just getting down, like getting into them now. Well, they can't really fight back. I know that we're giving up high ground, but we don't have enough range skill to make them charge. So, like that loses a lot of value from the high ground. They're only able to attack once a turn right now with most of these guys. Or just shield wall, like they might even not be able to attack us, depending what their AI chooses to do. Well, these guys, these guys, I mean, they have value, right? So if we just run them within shield wall, they're likely to die. We can take our time and play play correctly. We want to minimize like the amount of damage we take. If I can stun him, he can't put up his shield wall, he'll be a lot easier to kill. Do I dagger him now? I can dagger him for this armor. Daggering loses value in raiders because you're likely to get the armor even if you don't dagger. Yeah. Even keeping him stunned with like with a morning star is gonna break his arm. I'll just kill him. We got a lamellar. This guy has the highest defense. This guy wants underdog. This guy's taking student. Um Iric here. We could give this guy quick hands for a pitchfork. That'll help us if, if we're stuck in like a, a standoff like that again. Where they just don't want to leave high ground. That'll help us with that. So this padded armor is not really worth keeping or repairing. Um, we don't have any use for any of these weapons. Start putting daggers on people. Now, I think I have, a, I think I have an incentive to back off. So... The smaller party should move a little bit faster on the map. See how the five caravan is getting ahead of the nine? We want to get just far enough ahead that we can attack it. We'll see which, maybe they'll head different directions here. Nice. I want to be able to go hire the raider companion. So. I think it's worth going and selling in that town. It'll help, it'll help our fight density. Yeah, we can put the sling on the monk. Yeah, thank you for the reminder. Instead of the net. We're not going to need the net for caravans. Sa save our ammo, right? Just sit back and take our time chipping away at enemies. We're going to avoid two-on-ones with brothers we want to keep. See how those... And this is obviously like not a impactful fight, but until we have underdog on them, uh, we don't want to put them in two-on-ones. We're just giving the enemy an opportunity to focus down a brother with a with a plus attack. We don't. There's no reason to give them that opportunity if you can avoid it. Okay. Yeah, so we'll put the net on the tank, I guess. Instead of this. And give the monk the sling to start with instead of a dagger. That makes sense, right? So we're going to head back to... Do we head all the way back to the city, guys? To get a better sale price and maybe get an easy mission. Maybe hire a hunter. A lot of little maybe things. Cheap Adventurous Noble. We have a functional banner. So I don't think that's a great investment. 
Can we get a little bit better price for these goods here? I don't really value the flails, guys. Flails are... Especially if they're actually lower value in Raider. Or we're likely to... Uh, need to repair these armors. Do I bother, guys? This is... I guess it's fine to have two backup armors. We're likely to get the armors even without hitting them. I think we just save our money for the Raider can follow her. Brigand. We have three, four days of pay. So he will show us every caravan created 70 tiles away from us. So if you look at the map, you can kind of see a tile. This is a tile. This is a tile. So 70 tiles is like... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so I mean, I'll just use my fingers on the map. One, two, three, four. It's like, it's a little more than half the map. But it only creates the, it only, it only procs if you're within 70 tiles of the caravan when it originates. So caravans that exist on the map now, we will not get Raider for. If a caravan procs up in Tor, like Hammerstead here, and we move closer to it, you won't see it. That means we want to kind of like hang out in the middle of this enemy territory and then branch out. And this is important. So we want to get into about here. I think we need to be a little stronger to fight multiple Reavers. Although, it's close to wanting to fight Reavers. Uh, brigands are definitely a fight. And here we'll probably start with the Javs. We have 54 ammo. It's probably good to start with Javs. And I'm going to go quick, grab a quick drink for this fight. I'll be back in about two minutes. Right, let's look at our fight. Um, most valuable weapon and armor on the same brother. Or, sorry, most dangerous weapon and most valuable armor on the same brother. Our armor situation is pretty decent. I don't think it's worth getting hit by this this weapon to try to dagger the armor. Um, other than that, these two boar spears are actually kind of dangerous. So... We can actually kite back and get one round off of attacks. I think it's probably correct. If I move back two tiles, one, two, three, four, I can at least get a fast adaptation stack up on the monk. And I'm just going to attack whatever's closest. I'm not going to worry about uh, targeting. 
I don't want to miss the attack. We should get a couple turns. I'd like to be able to get on high ground even. There's a decent high ground here. I can get a lot of value out of it. If we can kill one or two before they close melee, we'll be at a decent advantage. That guy has jabs, which I would like more jabs. Uh, so how are we going to set up? If my thrower here will have a nice plus to hit. Gazwin we would like to keep. So I don't really want to use him like on the wings too far. I have how many frontliners? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. I can actually uh, keep a formation perfectly on here. So we're going to stick in formation. We are going to give them some range attacks on us. Can we, can we get there? Yeah, I can get there. That's fine, though. Uh, this guy can go high ground as well. And we go. At least we got a hit there. Uh, I could stun to drop a shield wall. So we'll kind of decide here. Flails ignore shield bonus, but not shield wall. Um, <clears throat> this is like like a 48% chance to drop a shield wall. Let's see if we have a kill on other enemies that move in before we uh, make a decision there. I, this guy, his job should be to move here in shield wall, but he's low level, he's weak. He's got some of my worst armor. I think I, I, think I just kind of play safe with him. And here... Let's hope for the kill there. Nice. We got lucky there. This guy can walk down into two thugs. This guy's not valuable enough. We need to protect him. And then we can protect him here with a, a spear wall. Uh, Yeah, I can advance here and maybe get a kill. I think that's probably correct. Now I can probably advance here and shield wall. There's, a little, there's less pressure now here. Boom. Okay. I'm going to try to stun this guy so he doesn't yeet me with his two-hander. There we go. And I don't care about that armor. I know it's good armor, but there's no need to lose a brother for this armor. We're playing raiders, guys, remember. We have an increased chance of, of items dropping, even when they're broken. There's no reason to stun now. We're likely to kill him in one or two hits. Okay. Armor, Helm, extra jabs, a lot of good stuff. We'll keep the jabs. Armor will go to our Barbarian. Um, These guys get probably dodge, right? This guy we said we're going to try to make him a two-hander, I think. A little gifted on him then. This guy, we're going to make some kind of tank out of him, ideally. A little bit better helmet and armor on him. Actually, this guy should we, should... we should give the best armors to our best brothers, right? This hood... is kind of not the greatest. There you go, there's 20 more helm armor, head armor. Um, Morningstar versus Croquet Mallet. Let's go Croquet Mallet. I think it's close. And we can we can calculate the damage kind of. This is seventy five damage. 
This is like 80. Yeah, it's about the same damage. And this is less fatigue. Access to stun. How, how much do we value access to stun? I think probably not a lot. Because we don't have mace mastery, so... We're talking about like a 50 to 60% chance to stun on a brother with what, not that much excess fatigue. I think that's just kind of low value, so... The brigands should start kicking in soon. We just walked down this road and we smashed trade caravans and peasants. And then hopefully some we can start fighting against thralls and reavers. Arming sword is very valuable early. We'll see if they come at us because of our throwing weapons. If not, we'll just pull out the sling and just start yeeting. Although it makes sense to set up on high ground first, correct? So let's go set up on the high ground. One, two, three. And again, uh, I know there's a lot of associated questions in chat, but during overexplained runs, we're going to try to stay on topic, uh, specific to what we're doing in the run. So, uh, chat can probably answer those kind of questions. Uh, if chat answers wrong, then I'll type something in. So, what's my decision points here? Looking at their weapons, the scram saxes are dangerous. This guy's also light. These, they're both also lightly armored, so they should be good, good soft targets at the beginning of the fight. I could advance and attack this one with my two-handers, but this guy already passed his turn, so I think we just don't. I can, I can keep them off me with spear wall here for a bit. If he advances at me, he only, he's only gonna have one attack, so he's not super dangerous until he's had a couple attacks. So we'll just kind of let him come in. Take his one attack, and he did, he did hit us, but we'll just yeet him. Scram sex here is still dangerous. This guy has quick hands, so we can pitchfork, right? Nice. And here we pull out the sling. And we got the pitchfork as well. And he'll, he'll either come to us or we'll kill him with the pitchfork over 10 turns. It's his choice. We'll get right up in his grill with this with this thrower. I mean, it doesn't cost any ammo for us to just keep throwing at him. And as we kill more peasants, we'll get more pitchforks. Okay, he's leaving high ground. I don't need to close melee with my guys that don't have, have good defense. The days will reduce his damage output. The guys that are likely to die, let's not like waste their, them as a resource. It's a super, super low risk, but there's no benefit to taking it. Alright, we got uh, some decently valuable weapons and trade goods. We didn't get the Arming Sword, unfortunately. I would rate the Arming Sword is better than the Orc Cleaver. Especially on the guy with dodge. Like, Hello? Um... Let's keep it, uh, let's keep it PG rated in chat, please. We'll take this just for a mood boost. 
<clears throat> Sorry for the carrot. I need a little snack. We're pretty early into it. You can probably watch it on 4X if you've watched me before. We've done a lot of uh, asides for explaining stuff. I don't need to waste ammo here, right? Just smack with the sling. Boom. And that, like, there's not much gold or experience. We do just get a mood boost from uh, winning a fight. Hey, you gotta be patient to play optimally. So let's look at this. Uh, we probably just claim some high ground tiles and just yeet them, I would say. This guy could get pressured a bit. Put this tanky guy here. If they try to surround this tank, we can just blow them up, I think. Because they're going to have to surround him by go like, giving this hammer high ground on him. I think you don't want to give a giant two-hander a high ground tile on you. Uh, jab at this distance. If I go here, he's likely to get targeted by this hand. So let's wait here first. See where they go. Yeah, let's go here and finish off the scram sex dude. All right, pretty easy fight, right? This is a fight we can kind of rush in and like save our brain cells on. We do actually lose like a bunch of gold from letting this guy get hit, but our shield guy getting hit is not a misplay. It's just uh, sometimes it'd be like that, right? And not waste the ammo if we don't have to. I guess I'm wasting durability on the sling, but that's like... <laughs> I'm going to use durability in any weapon I hit him with. So, I guess we, re we repair everything that's valuable. Here's a nice trading caravan. And we can just kind of repair here as it comes to us. Now the brigand is going to start giving us a bunch of good fights. We do want to fight these during the day. So, I'm just selecting terrain here. I prefer having my uh, frontliners on the high ground if possible. Because um, I get offense and defense from it. I don't know if we can bait them out quite from here. We can try. Uh, we need to move up three tiles to be able to hit them. So... Looks like they're going to sit back here. I don't think it makes sense to like float my monk out in front, right? So we'll just kind of inch our formation forward. We don't really get any, have any, inf any information on the fight yet. So we'll, we'll be... Uh... Kind of considering as we see them. So what do we see here that's dangerous? Scram sexes are dangerous to lightly armored guys. Short swords aren't awful. We got a hand axe here, and another scram sex up here. Um, I think we just move forward two tiles here, right? They may just sit back and let us poke them down with us with our one sling. Their AI is very very defensive on these, so slings are actually quite good against caravans, because you don't feel like you're wasting ammo if you're just sitting back and eating them. So I'm going to go ahead and beat myself and eat this carrot. 
We're just gonna stand here and sling these caravan hands until they either die or charge us. Okay, so the main thing here is, like, I didn't actually expect them to charge there. This hand, I think we can kill him before he can attack again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and finish him off with my thrower. I don't want to advance here. I want to let them come in. Engelbart's getting pressured a bit, so we're not quite in the formation we wanted to be in. Which is fine. I can throw 30% into a shield wall or 70% into a non-shield wall. That's an easy decision. Boom. The orc flail is putting in work. And we'll get set up to, to move in and aggress on these guys in a minute here. Boom, boom. Do I waste the throwing ammo here? This guy doesn't need to risk himself. I think we can hit like once we start using ammo on him. Or we just sling him too, it's viable. Alright, there he goes. Uh, we could try to dagger him for the extra gold. It's worth doing, right? This helmet is, is worthwhile. Cost a couple brain cells, but nothing else. So now we're starting to kill guards pretty easily. And we are going to start getting better, uh... Better helms then. Forge tank here. We probably... Want to, don't use him until like level 9 or so. So he can just keep sitting in the back with his gear. Um... Yeah. And then pass the helms out. Scram sex to sell. Everybody's got their backpack shields. Do we see any caravans? We see a caravan right here. So let's move, move out towards this trading caravan here. Another caravan up this way. Oh, this is interesting, guys. This is interesting. We have we have eight guys. They have seven. I think this is probably it's definitely a net loss. I'm not sure if we win or lose. We do not have more resources after the fight than we did before, though. I know that. This kid looks like it's headed down this road to Sandakai. We may not be able to reach it with this. This this party may push us away. We may get... Yeah, I think we just don't get to that one. Oh, it's turning here. Nice. We're going to be able to hit two in this little pass. Another group of brigands is killing our, our caravans. It's quite rude of them. Uh, we are going to kill those brigands so they don't, they don't kill our prey. Uh, 
Yeah, it's probably death. It's certainly not profit, which is the real question. It's not if we win or lose. Is are we stronger before or after the fight? We're losing like two guys for that fight. Like, what do we get for it? Like, maybe a bill hook. Is that really worth losing like two fight? Even like two fodder brothers. Is that really worth it? <clears throat> Probably not. Level three fodder is worth a lot more than level one fodder. Like, they actually survive, like, these tier of fights pretty consistently. The fights we're doing, uh, level 3 fodder survive and level 1 fodder don't. That's, that's a big upgrade. Because, you know, eventually they become, like, level 7 fodder and then they're usable. Like, we can, like, use them as, as semi-tanks. And they can do a job. No, Arlabaster doesn't solo guy. We take Colossus and Gifted and level HP. Arlabaster is like three shots to kill our guys. But it's an injury every turn. And injuries cost money. Injuries cost money. Okay, I mean, I don't need to waste ammo here then. Yeah, one guy still, two guys still fighting. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there was peasants and normal dudes, so our inventory's full. Six raiders is a good fight. Anybody scuffed? Uh, this armor is at fifty-five. This is a little bit better then. We can repair that up. Anyone else scuffed? We're pretty, we're pretty sad. So I think we actually do. We consider turning around. We have a lot of useless items we're carrying. This is all worth like zero. I don't think we turn around around, but uh, there is a, semi, a mini bonk. This guy's got a mini bonk. <clears throat> they think they outrange us because they have more jabs than us. Um, how do we approach this fight then? Let's come up with a plan of action. This throwing spear hurts. Uh, giving them high ground hurts. This guy's got jabs. They have two throwers. We only have one, and our thrower is not good. So, but to be fair, this guy, once this guy throws his jab, he will not consider himself ranged anymore. So if we back off, and this guy uses his throwing weapon into like a shield wall or a dodge guy, I think they will charge us after this. Oh, they have two of these. I think they'll charge us after these single-use spears are thrown, though. So I think we just kind of frontline our, our couple of kite shield guys. This is when those pocket shields come in handy, boys. <clears throat> we got pocket shields. We try to we try to tank these, and hopefully they they uh, charge us after they waste these big throwing weapons. They should charge us, although they have more throwers than we thought. <clears throat> Let's see if we can use this good terrain though. I think they're going to come into our terrain here. They will count the fast adaptation stacks as his range skill. So these two fast adaptation stacks and this thrower will actually make them more likely to charge us. Okay, they've wasted all their single use weapons. I think we just keep shield walling this, boys. Uh, we have this pitchfork, so we can use them as a backliner. 47. Can I get one more stack, maybe? Nice. Okay, they're here they come, here they come. Do I move him forward? Yeah, I probably do. Now this shield probably should drop. Oh, they each have two more jabs left. They're going to just throw at this guy. I probably... Oh, look at the value out of that shield. Look at those backpack shield strats. Uh, Eugene here is going to get pressured if we keep him here. I think I probably drop this shield now and start swinging.
85%. Nice. This guy dies to that bleed next turn, I think. Yeah, now we probably need to get a shield guy up here. We have a spear wall guy, which is a start. Um, this is a high ground tile we can use. We can spear wall, try to spear wall them off. Uh, this is the most valuable weapon on the board. Um, I'm fine with him going here. I think we can protect him here. Oh, I'm also fine with just waiting here. Ooh, 52. Nice. And let's grab high ground with him. Uh, this is an exposed tile, but he's protected by a spear wall. And I think we're, I think we're ready for them as they come in. We want to be able to kill this guy before he can swing his weapons. We're going to hold a bunch of attacks and as many guys as possible. And we're going to hope to stun him. We can also try to push him onto the low ground here. And I think, do we take first strike? This guy could swarm these guys down here. I think we take first strike. Especially having the shield into the... Or sorry, the um, flail into the shield. Is this part of the fight solved? Uh, I think it's. I think I'm happy with it. I think I don't have a great attack. Uh, that kill would be nice. Let's go ahead and surround this guy. We try to stun. Uh, this guy. I think I need to get. I think I want the kill here. Um, we don't get attacked this turn. Which worries me more, this guy killing my my dodge quick hands guy, or this guy injuring me? I think this is probably more worrying. I'll you know, put the power down here. Goswin's shield is broken, so I think I'm just going to have him ready to go in. He also doesn't have a good hat. He gets injured if he gets hit in the head twice. Uh, I think it's not worth the injury, unless Hafuga gets hit. So we'll have Goswin ready as a backup plan. Okay, it looks like our problem is actually right here. Uh, sometimes this happens though. The part of the fight that's stable becomes unstable. Thirty-four. Okay. Nice. Okay, very very good loot. Very good loot. Yeah. So we don't have any one-handers in our brigands and on our opening raiders anymore. We can go shield mastery. Oh no, this guy's we're trying to try to make this guy fatigue neutral, right? Is that what we said? Do we know what we're doing with this guy? Uh he's not a shield broke because he's drunkard. We could take backstabber on him, but we have him on a flank with a spear now. I take student on him. I, I think it's I think it's greedy to try to make him fatigue neutral because we already need an armor for our forge tank. I think we just make him like we just give him dodge. Let's give him dodge. We're gonna probably make him like a sword duelist or something or a fast levitation duelist. The drunkard's worth a bunch of melee skill eventually, so take dodge. I got throwing mastery on our banner. Big two. <laughs> a, th a thrower with 52 skill. And he's putting in work. He's putting in work. Uh, this guy is getting shield mastery. He's just a fodder tank. And if this guy lives to level 8, he's good. So we take recover at 5, underdog, nimble, indom. If he gets to indom, even if he gets to level 7, he's valuable. Um, armor upgrades. Let's give you this chainmail. We don't need to repair this armor. Our helm situation is not the greatest, is it? Yeah, not the greatest helm situation. Uh, bear hat. Bear hat fashion. Let's give you a bear hat. Anything else we want to change out with the new gear, guys? Everybody's got a good dagger. Uh, this armor we probably want to repair, but we'll switch this out for now. 
Uh, we don't have better helms available to us. Our our corner guys have shields. We have two handers on our starting raiders. I should actually keep this chainmail on him. Uh, this gets repaired and saved. Do we have enough backup armors? 65. This is not a backup armor anymore. We have two backup armors. That's three backup armors. We'll keep, we'll keep four backup armors, right? So that way we have like half out of backup armors for like half of our team. Um, I think... this Is this guy's weapon sus? He's got 62 stamina. Now that he has dodged, the orc weapon loses value. Because he's actually losing defense from this. I'm going to give him a 65 attack Morningstar or a Falchion. Probably close. Probably close. Yeah, this guy could be a this guy could be a good greatsword guy. That's he could be a dodge reach advantage <clears throat> if we get a free greatsword. That's a that's a, that is correct speed. That would be the ideal build for this guy. I don't think buying a, buying a greatsword is generally worth it, but if we could kill a raider or something or a zvihander. So now our decision is to look at our least valuable items. Do we go back and sell? Or do we look for one more caravan? There's a trading caravan here. We can see which way it's headed before we decide. It's headed towards us. I heard if there's another trading caravan here. So we can hit this trading caravan and then head back to City to Sal and get this ambition. And maybe keep fishing for a hunter. These are friendly, we can't hit these. We all start getting out, getting low on tools, so I think that makes hitting this caravan and then heading home correct. If we weren't low on tools, we probably would would not do this. The food loses value, but uh, I think we have more important things to worry about than making making gold from the food. Hey, we we did kill the brigands. Yeah, we killed the brigands that are stealing our our. Uh, Get some. We still would like a real backliner. We're just using a monk with fast adaptation, just because we have to have something. Uh, the difference between one and zero range units against caravans is huge. Being able to dictate the terrain, uh, chip them down. Very valuable. Whoops. We also buy a bonk, maybe. So, we could walk here and then boat. We can also just cross this swamp. Maybe find like a brigand group or something. But being out of tools means I think we're kind of done making money on this trip. So I keep backup armors. Yeah, I think we're I think we're done making money on this trip. Our drunker lost a dagger, whatever. It's fine. Friendly caravan. We want to go sell before we look to this. We buy stuff in Steiner and we sell in Stenakai. What do we have for... Ooh. We have a poacher for 430 and we have a cell sword for 3.5k and a militia for 1,000. I'm not inclined to buy any of these. I'm not inclined to buy any of these. Let's go ahead and uh, convert some of this stuff to cash. Because we're out of tools, I don't think it's worth repairing this stuff. I know we could could be potentially selling this stuff for more if we had tools, uh, but tools are kind of we're kind of short on tools right now. Yeah, I don't think this is a good value. It's too early. It's not that great of a background. Uh, poacher. 
Poachers, they're so much worse than hunters. It's hard to want to pay a half price for them. We have enough range skill for the things we're fighting. I think we do this while we repair. We could still sell more food. Okay. Yeah, I think poachers are a desperation hire. Okay, we got this. Uh, we get some upgraded quick hands weapons then. Banner, this guy doesn't have quick hands yet, so I don't think it's even worth giving him the banner. Our tank can hold the banner. Uh, who has quick hands? Do you have quick hands? Uh, we can still repair this, right? 65, 80, 80. Yeah, this only has 33. So we have quick hands on this guy, on Irik. No underdog. I mean, he's not going to get underdog, right? Not yet. So level 7 is a big power spike. Okay, this is a good fight for us. Good fight. If he had a great axe, would we hire him? Yes. Oh, but he would also probably cost 5k. Oh, we'd really like to get a bonk. This is a pretty good weapon right here. Even if he had a bill hook, we'd probably hire him. Bill hooks are less valuable in raiders because you can normally get them for free by raiding. You know, killing supply caravans. We do need help up in this portion of the fight. So it looks like we will actually probably get quick hands weapons in time. What is this guy going? We do, yeah, this guy is going to not really be able to hold off much longer. He doesn't have underdog yet, so as this raider moves in, he's going to he's gonna threaten him quite a bit. All right, this looks like this fight is, is going reasonably well. Not a hard fight, but uh, fights can always turn south, so it's good to be aware of like what could be a problem in a fight. And this was what could be a problem. Goswin here. Yeah, now he's just got a three-man surround, so... He still could die. I believe he has shield mastery. Whoops. Now it should be fine. I tried to stun there so I could move the guy, move our guy away, but we're just gonna kill him anyways. So all good. One level. This is a three skull mission, so I think we're pretty happy with the results. It must have been a low roll. Underdog or quick hands? Probably quick hands, right? We have twenty-one defense. Who has the most defense? This guy's not going to catch up for a while. We don't actually have a good quick hands weapon. Pitchfork? Because I'm going to go underdog. Make him tankier. If I had a better weapon, I would go uh, quick hands, a better reach weapon. A pitchfork is just like... <gasps> damage is so low. I'm not buying a weapon. We could do this if we felt like we had to hire a beast hunter. Uh, I would love to hire a beast hunter. I don't want to walk across the map to do it though. So I think we just sell here. I know we're not going to sell at the greatest prices. Uh, but we don't have the most tools. And as we move north, we're going to get worse prices. All right, bear hat, bear hat meta is still a thing. Uh, I do need to buy ammo. 
I should be able to buy ammo in the next town, though. This is our best sale price they're going to be here. And I don't think it's worth going for missions. I think we go hit more caravans. I think we start considering fighting supply caravans. Snacks? Uh, we're not ready for... Snacks are just a money loser, right? There's, there's no way we come out of that fight with more resources than we went into it with. I don't hate beasts. I don't hate witch hunters, but 2.8k. Well, it's kind of a derpy weapon. It's not useful. Uh, the pros are you get good brothers and a ton of money, and the cons are, uh, <laughs> there aren't really cons. It's easier than the vanilla start. Uh, I don't, I'm not motivated to buy any of these. It's, it's generally an easy start. Anything like a broken bill of the shop we'd consider buying? Broken military cleaver. Um, I don't really want to make a cleaver do the list, so that's without a famed. This is not as, it's not, it's not as good as even reaver weapons. And we just stock up on ammo. And we go fight, right? Yeah, you start, you start hostile to two factions, but... You also get more gear drops from fights. Uh, the supply caravan, we probably keep the smaller supply caravans. We don't, we haven't killed any beasts yet, folks, so scout's not going to be a thing. I'd actually probably just before even rat new. Uh, this should just kick right away. Before we even get rat new, we probably just upgrade our cart size. Because we are tapping out our cart size every fight. Every expedition. I was eating a carrot there. Uh, I think this is a good fight, right? Like, not one we're super concerned about. This guy fighting three caravan hands could be tough. But I think we'll get to kind of dent their resolve a good bit. 19%, 21%. I'm using a sling here then. I'll just try to focus this one guy down. Yeah, there goes the resolve, right? Now I can dagger this guy for his helm. I think that's worth. We do have a helm situation. Assuming we can get the morale down. Oh, uh, I could maybe daze him with a sling. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's just surround him in dagger then. Get as many bodies on him as we can. Alright, there we go. Probably at Nimble we stop backpacking shields. It's just an insurance policy at this point. I either stop backpacking shields at Nimble or at Dodge. Two arming swords. Unfortunately, I think arming swords are already kind of past their prime. They're really good, like level 2 to 4 weapon. Uh, our team's level 6 now. And then this guy takes Underdog. We got 21 defense. We don't have a reach weapon for him. What do we get out of quick hands? This guy can maybe have an arming sword instead. But it's pretty close at 65 attack, which is better. Mm. We did not get the helm, unfortunately. So, 
another caravan here. Supply caravan is probably too spicy still, we said, right? Alright. My tank will have enough resolve, we get at least something out of the banner. This guy probably needs quick hands to be able to use the banner. Guy needs a lot of stuff. Two caravans up here. Now let's go fight Reavers, guys. We bought a bunch of supplies. We can go on a nice long trip. All right, caravan's coming this way. Sure. Experience is experience. Uh, if we're going to fight Geist Camps, we need Fort Mind and the Monk before Quick Hands. Uh, I think I'd rather fight Reavers now. I think Reavers and... and uh, because of our party size, if we had 12 Undead Camps, would be good. I uh, think we probably... I also, in an unknown maps, we're not playing Unexplored, but from playing so much Unexplored, I've gotten in the habit of not wanting to go in the wilds until I have Scout and Lookout. And that's like, we're nowhere near, right? We're not like, we're not like clipping along at a uh, super powerful, amazing pace. We're just like, we're playing steady. You cannot recruit, you can't go into Red Towns. It's day 22. Uh, lost two guys, both fodder tanks, kind of expected. Our team's level four to six. It's like 4.8 level average. We have mostly usable brothers, so I, I think we just chill. Can we just chill and start looking to add in usable brothers? Oh, we... Oh, crap. We're gonna have to... We're not allowed to third party. Uh, I don't do third party. There's just too many ways to abuse it, so... We do get a nice chance of a weapon drop here, don't we? Shoot wall there. I don't know where the last one is. I could try to stun this guy, but I think we could just kill him. He's got to be in here, right? He's in here. You can't actually walk into occupied tiles. You can see. Uh, who has underdog? This guy has underdog, so he could. Whoops. Alright. He could think about going to this tile, but I don't even know this weapon, so I'm kind of hesitant to go there. We are going to give this guy this... Okay, it's a pike. Nice. We have some problems now, don't we? Alright. Problem solved. Guido. How bad is that injury? That kind of zones us out of... If we're borderline for fights, like let's say a caravan or like a couple reavers. Then that makes us not want to take a borderline fight. But for like the... I don't think it changes our, our willingness to do caravans. Uh, raiders do have execution. Oh, this is, this is not one of the reavers. This is not a starting brother. Um, I'm gonna quick hands on him. We do have this pike. I could just run the shield on him too until he's healed. Keep chainmails. You don't. We don't really, It's hard to dagger, but we don't. We're not really fighting stuff. We need to dagger, are we? I don't think we really are. Yeah, we just run the shield on him until he's until he's better, and then at some point we'll get him a two-hander. I don't think we need to buy a bonk. Day twenty-two. I think we're better off fighting reavers for them. I don't see supply caravan of seven. Is that a good fight, guys? What do we think? That's the smallest supply caravan we can get. 
We're not nimble yet on our boys. Uh, that's that's two less footmen than this. This is probably still not great with that injury. This fight's a consider. I was also going north for Reavers. Uh, we don't we can't tell what's in here. Because I think we just go north. I think this is a long haul for a potential supply, supply caravan. If we head this way, we'll find a bunch of caravans. I'm sure we'll see at least one supply caravan. And maybe raiders. So. Or reavers, reavers. Uh, we can go for a dozen, man. Even if we, like, recruit four guys and don't keep them, we we'll just get to look at four guys. So I don't see... Here's a supply caravan. Okay, there's a couple caravans up here. We'll try to head towards, like, Koningsfield here. We haven't always seen many beasts on the seed. Uh, do we turn back for that? I don't think we turn back for it. If it heads up this way, we can, we can cut it off. Oh, there's a trading caravan down here. Still eight in the company. Okay. Looks like that's a no-go. Can we get to this one? There's three Kirens this way. We just head this way. Uh, let me see if I can clear this. Clear this little bug off. Really? Looks like I have to restart. Give me a second to restart the program, guys. Uh, there is a conflict with the Brigand and the Autopause mod, so make sure I delete Autopause. Okay. Autopause just pauses every time there's a new enemy sighted. And it does not work with the Brigand follower. Which is kind of hard to, to interact with chat without autopause. We have wiped many a time when I am not paying perfect attention to the map. Uh, and I value interacting with chat, so... What is this? Uh, I think that might just be a seed. Okay, so we got an army back here that we can't fight. Got three caravans if we head down this road. Potentially raiders. Looks like there's some brigands here. Okay, 12 thugs is a good fight. And what, this looks like we have four or five good fights in a row. So brigands, brigands, caravan, caravan, caravan. If hope we can hit them all without uh, getting too scuffed. They think they outrange us. I think we could sit back and shoot them, shoot, shoot them out if we had to. But we take probably a lot of damage, so... Let's get one tile away with our shield bros. So next turn we can move in with our two-handers. And we might get hit a couple times with these two-handers. They have dodge, though. So they actually have really good range defense. Uh, it's, it's relevant when you start fighting marksmen. I'm surprised we haven't seen marksmen yet. I guess we just have been, we've been fighting nobles, right? Woodcutter's axe is not not a great weapon to hit guy, but it's not not gonna one shot us or anything. Do you have quick hands, my dude? You don't, so let's keep you back here still. Irik, I believe, has quick hands instead of underdog, and he's got two guys on him. Uh, so let's see if we can solve that. Okay, solved. I'd like to be ready for this woodcutter's axe to come in. Uh, I don't want to give him more than one attack. I, mean, I don't want to give him one attack, but... I think that makes attacking here bad. Because if we attack and kill this guy, we give the woodcutter's axe an attack. So I'm going to chill with these attackers right now. This guy just has to die right away. Okay, he... Catch that backliner. Okay, good fight. <laughs> good fight. Uh, one guy left, huh?
slaughter. Slaughter. Any relevant gear? I don't think so. But these brigands here are kind of rude. They keep killing our caravans as they pass through. I don't see them anymore. I don't think we chase a stack of brigands, do we? Is it worth it? We don't have scouter lookout yet, so... We don't have, like, the speed boost to help us catch stuff. Also, we have this injury in Raiders of Executioner, which is, it's like a teeny thing, but it's, uh, it's to consider that this injury is giving Raiders bonus damage against us. At least this one guy. It's like, he's kind of at risk of dying against Raiders, but not against these guys. Obviously, this is like a pretty low risk fight, right? We're going for fight volume. That's that's generally what Raiders is about, is you have a very high fight volume. Uh, we're playing at Blind Seed, and we have 38 fights in 23 days on a Blind Seed. We do know there's an army behind us we don't want to fight. That also disincentivizes us from chasing back here. Chainmail, that's an upgrade for somebody. I don't think we repair these leather armors to keep. I think we have enough backup armors. Let's just repair stuff that's profitable to repair. I would, I, I would even fight the militia. I don't think militia will chase us anymore, though. And give me one quick second to refill my drink. I'm gonna need a quick snack during this fight. This fight's kind of a freebie, so I'm gonna meet myself real quick. Yeah.
Okay, so... <clears throat> noble War will set relations to cold with all three noble factions after the war. Holy War will only reset, I believe, the, the participating houses. Which the northernmost house does not participate. So Holy War, you'll keep the northern faction hostile after it, if you're raiders. But with Noble War, you'll go cold with everybody. Which, cold, cold can still go to towns. But we can't visit towns, which is kind of a hassle, right? Like, you can see we have not been able to hire a hunter yet. Even though we're like, that's the only thing we <laughs> only thing we want to... I would, I would hire two hunters right now if I could spend my gold in any way. But look, they're holding weapons. If they drop their weapons, then maybe I'm not supposed to kill them. Do I wait for morning to save tools on this fight? We're so close, I think I'm going to. I'll maybe save myself like five tools if I wait till morning. Um, I am just gonna advance here. One, two, three, four. I think this is fine to fight in a line. Um, we don't really have like, our guys aren't differentiated yet, right? Like our, our tanks aren't actually tanky. <clears throat> So I think we're just kind of just, just kind of chill until we can like use our guys to <clears throat> have special jobs. At this point, I think all of our team are people we're interested in keeping at least through the mid game. So like earlier game, in the early game you're playing based on whether or not you want to keep the brother. Not like once you get later in the game, everyone has a job that they're there to do. We're kind of between the two, right? We want to keep all these guys, but. No one can do a job yet. Like, our tanks can't in-dam recover or shield wall recover. We could have given our tanks recover. But without Underdog and Nimble, they still die pretty fast. Alright, guys. I have a sling. I have all day. <laughs> I have all day, literally, to throw... To, to sling at these guys. I'm not gonna wait. Like, I don't want to use all my brain cells for this fight. Alright, here they come. Here they come. Well, I have quick hands too, right? And one guy. Who has the quick hands? I, I keep forgetting. Oh, you have quick hands? Alright, now here they come. You don't have quick hands yet. You have quick hands, but you have a shield because you have an injury. Kind of a waste, but such is life. Mm, I have an option of throwing at the shield wall or moving here and throwing at an injured dude. Okay. And it'd be ideally we would like dagger some of these lamellers. But because we're in Raider, that's not as important. We're likely to get like one or two of them even without daggering. This guy, does this guy have underdog or not? He has underdog, so he can play here. If he didn't have underdog, we couldn't, we couldn't leave him here. And that's why, that's why I said, but why I like underdog is it? Uh, it changes the plays you're allowed to make with your brother. Oops, it's a waste. We could probably start daggering this Lamellar. These are the best nimble armors, so other than like assassins robes, like we're not gonna we're not gonna fight assassins, right? Like not not right now. Boom boom. Come on, fast adaptation. Do your thing. We could consider making a puncture bro for um, start puncturing down nobles. Worth considering. I normally don't like puncture bros. I feel like they're it's a lot of ex like experience has value, right? So if you're building a puncture bro, that means you're wasting experience for gear. When is that worth it? It's worth it as you work up in tiers, as you work from like thug gear to raider gear. That's not our situation. We have raider gear. Like, our men are each individually slightly stronger than raiders. 
Um, there's nothing we're fighting that we can puncture that will change up where we are on the power curve, right? Like, puncturing more raiders for chainmail doesn't make us a lot more money. Because you have to assume that, like, there's a cost to those punctures. Like, yes, we get more loot, but we take more injuries and we take more tool damage. So it may not even end up being, like, it may be worse than a wash. So we'll grab these. These armors are really nice. Dodge, great sword. Hopefully, yeah. That was, and we got two landlords too. So these are these let you have maximum nimble percentage. These landlord armors. Uh, it's the heaviest armor, common armor that lets you have maximum nimble percentage. This guy, we're probably, we're not entirely sure what his build is going to be. So we're going to pick student. A great sword's correct, but I'm not buying a great sword. So, if we get lucky and loot a great sword, he'll be a great sword, bro. He has kind of low fatigue. Um, we just we just kind of wait here, right? Uh oh. This is probably not a good fight yet. How far are we from wanting to fight twelve nobles? We probably want twelve guys, right? At least a couple specialized brothers. And again, we're playing conservative, right? Like you could play faster. Like you could be take we could be taking these fights. And we're gonna lose we're gonna lose runs if we do. We're looking for I would say 95% from pushing new game button to clearing a legendary. It would be like what I would consider a, a good strategy. And that's a personal preference. Uh, other people would prefer like a fifth, like a ten percent success rate, but getting there fifty days faster. Uh, it just depends on what you're playing for. There's no valid or invalid way to play this game. It's a single player game. I think our next buy is a cart then, right? Forge tank underdog. He's two levels from being usable. Once this guy's online, we're going to have more plays. So it couldn't be that our next buy is a full set of forge gear. And I think that's viable and valid. Right from under their noses. Good to see you, Bress. Because these fights are starting to get a little too easy, right? But there's enough trade goods in this map. We're still making good money. Like, harder fights are not even going to give us more money than this. So I think our plan is we head back. We go to 12. And then we start probably looking for camps on our next expedition. I really want actual backliners. I don't want to play with... I don't want to play with a monk with 35 attack because they're only ranged, dude. Because we're going to have really, really big problems scaling into Chosen if we don't have throwers. Throwers are like the, like the goat. They're like the cheapest late game build. They're the best defense, uh, DPS in the game. Their items are virtually free. They're the build you want to mass in your backline every game. With virtually no exceptions. And we just can't find a brother to even recruit that could potentially be one. And normally, uh, I guess that's just part of the disadvantage of raiders, right? Is you're playing on a small map. So like your recruit your recruit pool is kinda low. But then you start with you start with like four pretty good brothers. I'd say they're all viable late game brothers. They're certainly very strong mid game brothers. All right, we got a helm. We're getting all the loot. Thank you for the follow, Hapatis. So everybody up front has got decent gear. We're all in chainmail or batter. Uh, yeah. 
did we see anything worth hitting? Now is our question of, we could walk through here and look for Reavers to fight. We could, that's gotta be the correct play, right? We also explore up through the snow. Cause as we explore through, so as we explore through here, we'll get vision on all the caravans in here. It means we'll miss the black elks. If we explore through here, we'll get vision on all these caravans. Um, the militias probably don't fight us anymore. All right, well, I guess this this caravan will determine where we go. Supply caravan, which what direction is it headed? Let's try to see if we can figure it out. It's headed away from us, so here's a supply caravan. All right, this is our first supply caravan, guys. It's only six. Arlabaster or no? No Arlabaster. Can we hit them in the day to make our thrower better? Or is that like overkill? I think it's not for our first supply caravan. Because the, the more cleanly we can win the fight, the more armor we can dagger. Yeah, it's like there's a cost to selling though, right? Uh, I think we want to back up a couple tiles here and try to get a little bit of kiting in with our thrower. If we advance, we don't have an attack. So there's no point in advancing. This one high ground tile is not that valuable. But you try to break up their formation so they can't just like chain shield wall us. But we don't have anybody with like underdog and shield mastery. I don't think we have anybody that can survive breaking up their formation. This is our only guy with shield mastery and he's still level five. So I think we go first strike here. And we go for the first strike. We want to work from a flank on onion. If we can stun them, they can't shield wall next turn. I did attempt to stun there. Obviously, it missed. Um, so we'll try to focus on... This guy already broke, so if we hit him, he could maybe go to fleeing. Nice. I could probably focus this individual here. And the thrower should go on the heater shield, bro. Not the kite shield, bro. All right, good start. Now they all get to put their shield wall up. Although I could do this, and then spear wall to try to stall this flank. Fifty nine. I'll take it. We we don't have we have throwing mastery. Um, let's see where this guy goes. Eighty three. Nice orc chain coming in handy. I'm just going to shield wall here. And we're going to try to stun just to drop his shield if we can. Uh, we kind of missed it. We could dagger this 200 helm maybe, but he's fleeing already, so... We may not... I mean, this is a, a much easier fight than I expected. Can I run up and dog to catch this last one? I thought this fight was gonna be harder, guys. I haven't I haven't played Raiders in a while, so. I think I'm underestimating our strength. Okay, we caught him. They're all, also no dangerous weapons, right? They're all like Falchion, Morningstar. Uh, we hit all of our two handers hit on turn one. I think that was. I think that was about as well as this fight ever goes. So. But I think supply caravans, we want to hit all of them that we see now. We do get some nice armors, actually. So who is getting the heavy stuff? We got Nimble on Smud. We already have Dodge on Engelbert, right? That makes the heavy armors not as valuable. I think they go on Eugene, right? We got 200s. 
Uh, he's not like forge tank ready yet, but I think. Do we even bother forge? We could just go. We could just go in down recover right now, right? We could go recover at seven and in down at eight, and then start frontlining him. Gauswin fodder tank. Go recover. So we're we're close to having some functional tanks, which will change the game quite a bit. Because we'll actually be able to have like more strategy. We'll have people we think can survive fights. Uh, everybody's in at least raider gear. This is a 150. It's basically like a little worse than glad armor. Clean chainmail is a little bit better than this, right? Once it's repaired at least. Keep some of these uh, clean armors. Yes, yeah, so our options are to go back. Uh, I mean, we're going to lose, like, we are full. So maybe we do a loop through here. We could also cut, I mean, how much do we value Reaver weapons right now? I would like Reaver weapons as soon as we can get them. I don't think we can cut the supply cavern off before it gets to, it's got to be heading to Newmark or Finsburg. I don't think we make it there in time. Um, I think we, yeah, I think we head back and hope to cut this supply caravan off. But don't expect it. We are faster than it. We don't have scout or lookout, so... Cutting through the wilds can be dangerous. My free gold, we turned into deserter. And we are gonna catch it. Oh, four Alps, this is a good fight, actually. Four Alps is a great fight for us. We need some beast fights for scout. And we do have, yeah, we have all the things to fight Alps, right? We have two-handers. We have a, a rally. The terrain is very sus, but... We got people that can stun. Oh, I don't want to go there. I don't want to take away my two-hander attacks. There's a lot up here, so let's head here. I don't need to like natter dog or anything here, I don't think. I don't have quick hands. This guy needs quick hands so bad. Just wake him up before you go go. I don't have long axes or anything, so I am still doing piercing damage. That's probably a kill if that hits. Uh, I could, that's probably a kill if it hits. I'm gonna keep our people in a group. Two enders aren't finding attacks, but that's sometimes it'd be like that. Okay, go sling. Good to see you, Bumba. We're doing some overexplained action right now. Maybe like day 20, like 25, 30-ish, somewhere there on a Raiders run. Most of our teams, I'd say average level is close to 5. Should probably just save attacks for the two handers, right? Or for a stun. Uh, if you stun them, that the, the Alp you stun cannot teleport until his next turn. The other Alps will teleport when you hit him, but the, the stunned one will not. So you can see here. We could try to stun this one too, yeah. And Alps do take reduced damage from piercing attacks, so most ranged attacks. Spears, pitchforks, daggers, anything like that. I'm gonna take reduced damage from. This guy's gonna run away. I think he's. We could probably dog him. Yeah, I think we dog him. They don't have bonus action points. I think they do have Pathfinder. 
but dogs will double catch him. No. I didn't play much uh, when Alps were broken. <laughs> or they were, so, they were so broken, we just we just didn't fight them. Kind of like, I guess kind of like Hexen now would be like the closest thing. Like, you fight them like twice a run just to say you did it. <laughs> but you don't enjoy it. Um, but I didn't play it that much that patch when Alps were like a giant headache to fight. Yeah. Hexen are beatable, it's just a pain it's a it's a pain to set up to beat Hexen. It's not really worth like the, the investment to beat them. Like it, it it costs more to carry the gear that kills them than than you get out of beating them, so like why bother? Yeah, Alps are free money. Alps are free money. Uh, I definitely want this stuff more than... I want to be able to make an Alp charm, Alp charm as soon as possible. Alright, so this supply caravan is why we came here. We want to cut off before this watchtower. Before it chooses a path. Alright, what's in here and anything we can do to make this fight better? I think I got to have a guy with a shield that shouldn't have a shield. Yeah, you shouldn't have a shield. I don't have a two-hander for him, but this weapon's fine. I think we're good. I think we're happy here, right? Six footmen, yeah. We fought eight before, I believe. Fought eight footmen. Any relevant gear? We got some hauberks. <clears throat> now let's put the injured guy on the high ground. And we're gonna stick in our line here, I think. Maybe we can, can spear roll up off this. I want to keep damage between the injured guy so that if they go on him, they have to pay for it. This guy, am I leaving him on an island unfairly? This guy has lighter armor, so let's ship him first. This guy, I could have gotten this guy in trouble. I don't think they go on if he's spear a flank. I just think they just kind of like walk around him. I should hit this guy before he can get a shield wall up. Um, they can actually move in shield wall next turn. Do we care? This guy can, sh can spear wall here. I think I'm pretty happy with my terrain here. This guy does not. This guy has underdog and quick hands. This guy does not have underdog. So if I back him off, this, this man is exposed. I would have to take a shield out with him. I also have the line of play of putting Eric back here. To use his AOE weapon. We have quick hands. That's probably the correct play. He has a backpack shield. Alright, let's let them come. This brother can always take a shield out and shield wall. If we're exposing like this. Now, they did not shield wall. So I think we want to get in there and do damage while we can. Before they get their shield wall off. Mm. Do I if I go here it's a one-on-one -on -one, he's safe. Here? This guy doesn't have quick hands, so this is kind of a low value attack. I could try to stun to drop his shield ball. Unlikely to hit. I could bump him back to try to ruin his shield wall. Fortunately, attack didn't hit. I will need to move guys around to be able to throw here. Sure. Without quick hands, we're not going to have an attack. This is probably my best place to go. This guy needs. This guy needs quick hands before nimble. I think it's worth considering. 
Uh, this part of the fight is scarier than here. I'm gonna try and knock back to ruin his shield wall and stagger him. Uh, now that shield wall, I think I do just get in and finish him off. And is it worth daggering this guy for a hauberk? I think it's worth trying to dagger him. Uh, if things go wrong, I can always like nat him or something. Get my javelin here ready to throw on him. Okay. Easy fight. Okay, any of this gear we think is valuable? Or are we ex accepting the auto loot and ditching this stuff? This is probably fine. Quite fine. Let's see what we want to upgrade to. We have a lot of 105 helms. Uh, so those are probably the best helms. For nimble dudes. You're going to be dodged, so we give you a 105 if we have one. This, These are much better than these. Anybody else we're thinking of making Forge? I can keep this 210. So we have 105s on everybody and something close to 95s. I believe a clean chainmail beats the, these. Now we stop keeping all the items worse than chainmail, right? Uh, this probably doesn't actually even beat the broken chain mills. I don't think this is really worth anything for us. So we got to decide here. Uh, nimble, quick hands. Uh, quick hands is a lot of damage, and let's actually use them as a banner. We need quick hands and fort to do undead camps. I actually don't need. We don't actually need. We don't need fort for undead camps, do we? Oh, sorry, we don't need uh... We don't actually need quick hands for undead camps, so you can just stand there with a the banner. But I think we're gonna wait till our, we find four more guys and they're level like at least four. Probably scout and lookout before we go busting camps. So I think I think we're still twenty to thirty days from busting camps. Um Which means I guess we don't really need fort. So we go quick hands. <laughs> 55 range goes. He's almost a level one hunter now. Uh, the sling is just to save money. Uh, at some point we'll put, we'll put the banner here. And then this guy soon will be a tank. We have another decent set of armor, though. I wonder who he put that on. This guy doesn't have, like, Nimble yet, so he can wear it for now. And then this helm is eventually an upgrade once we get Nimble. I'll keep this one as well. Um, we can give this guy heaters, huh? Okay, I think we're happy with our setup. Uh, this is like a roleplay item. I don't think we need this anymore. Actually, it's better than these. We should keep it. Keep it over this. Alright. We have two backup armors, but I really need to keep these. They're already repaired, so I think, I think we just don't repair them again as they break. Okay, so we're heading back to our port of sale, which is Senekai. Two trading caravans here. If they're heading our direction, they're worth hitting. They're heading towards us. At least this one is. We can always loop down the coast with this swamp to Steiner. Um, we could try to get people to nimble by just fielding these. Like This guy's going to hit nimble this fight. This guy will not. We skipped student on him. Uh, anyone else near like a big power spike? This guy is not going nimble. So there's no reason not to field our whole team here. Alright, 
quick hands coming in handy already. Yeah, kind of a freebie fight. Obviously, like, things always go wrong in this game. Whoops, I ended turn there. Things always go wrong in this game. I think we've wiped in virtually every situation one can imagine. Even in what should be freebie fights, but some manner of misplay or bad luck. It's usually a combination of both, though. Uh, we got Nimble on that dude. Uh, got a good amount of money. Some trade goods. First guy to Nimble. And we're on day 27. I think that's pretty good. If our Raiders are getting Nimble around day 30. For like a, a blind seed. It is a pick seed. So this is a pretty strong Raider seed. But we don't know anything about it. Other than like day one looking at it. Expensive Squire. Unfortunately, we can't hire him. Um, can hire these mi this miner at least. The farmhands are kind of pricey. Yeah, like not equipping a collar on our own wolf. Um, I don't think we buy long axes, and we won't buy any of this stuff. Um, no armor worth, but bu buying these two times, guys, don't buy these. If you feel like you have trouble keeping your guys alive, push Nimble. Dodge is a massive power spike at level 4, and Nimble is a big power spike at level 7. And these are just worse These are just worse than Nimble. So, I don't buy anything worse than the 285s. Uh, I don't see any here, so... Let's see if there's anything broken in the shop worth buying. Uh, broken bill hooks can be worth buying if you're not playing Raiders. We're likely to get bill hooks free, so... Yeah, yes, yes, the last two days, we've been trying to do stuff with Lone Wolf that just doesn't work anymore, guys. The solo play, like, just doesn't work anymore. Uh, there's just too many ways the game punishes it now, so. Steuben Jin a day east. Riyadwar a day east. I think there's an armor in Riyadwar, right? Armor. We're going to sell and take this caravan. The reason we're going to take it is uh could potentially buy an armor so who's worth hiring here this is a cheap caravan hand we don't really need another monk swine is pretty bad we could hire these these like 30 gold guys just for the achievement i think that's our play is just get the achievement knocked out and don't worry too much about uh trying to hope the brother's usable because he's probably not going to be We think we have plenty of heaters. As long as we continue to fight nobles, we'll have a good supply of heaters. So we're interested in buying a 285 armor, should one be offered. Anything else we sell here? We don't need this nomad sling anymore, do we? I guess we can keep it if we find no. Let's just let's cash it in, guys. Let's not let's not be ridiculous. We'll take this, this. Yeah, I mean, 3.5k cell. We're getting close to desperate enough to spend 3.5k on a cell sword. Like, if we don't find an armor in this town. Alright, let's look at these guys. Negative melee defense, no attack, no range attack, useless. We'll talk about him in a second. He's worth talking about. So this guy is a viable, nimble tank, but not worth making at this point in the game. And he probably doesn't survive more than, like, no resolve or hit points. You'd have to be really desperate to try to use him. We're not desperate. This guy is, this guy is a low-end dodge quick hands guy. Uh, he's got decent HP... Good attack, no defense. We don't need more dodge quick ants, guys, do we? I think we start looking for fat newts. So this this guy, I mean, I guess it's still pretty early, isn't it? It's day 30. We could make this guy dodge quick ants. 
This guy is a, is a good nimble tank. Uh, this guy is going to be a viable nimble tank. So I don't think we need to keep him. Th this guy is a viable dodge quick hands guy. So... I think he's worth building. Oh, uh, we do need just one... We just need bodies, right? He's not the body we want, but... Wait, we'll have to rest. Uh, we should be able to get some good purchases here. Two positive settlement situations. Let's look at our options. A 12k famed helm that's high rolled. Um, I mean, we can't buy it. I would, I would actually consider this. It's actually a grief to buy it, but I would buy it for the for the fun. Um. We could buy a bunch of dogs and try to run it chosen, but I think we're kind of short on bodies. Um, retired soldiers are not a great bargain. Tools are quite cheap, so we'll grab those. Nothing broken in the shop. So we're choosing between a cell swords armor or finding better bros. How does cell swords armor change our game? We're still one trip short of Indom Recover on our Forge tank. So it doesn't change the way we play him. He needs to be like level 8, right? Maybe even 9. Indom Recover with no Battle Forge. He's a little sus. And he probably wouldn't have much fatigue to keep it up. So I think the Cell Swords Armor doesn't really change our game. This guy here is going to be like a, a dodge reach advantage guy. So he's not using the armor. Yeah, I think we just don't have a brother to wear the armor, right? Not right now. So I think this is probably not... It's a good price, sure. It's just not a great investment. If it was the next tier armor higher, we'd grab it. But this, like, 260 is just a little bit low to actually get good benefit from Battle Forge. Um... So I think we're just kind of, we just don't get what we came for, right? We could sell this food west and make some money off of it. Let's look at our next play. So here are our options. We could do a route through these cities looking for bodies. Uh, recruit stuff like beast slayers, maybe sell swords. Yeah, the dogs are a good value, but we only have eight gu nine guys. So buying like nine dogs is not going to let us run it chosen. We need, we need backliners. We have zero backliners. Our backliner is a level 6 monk with, with uh, 55 range skill. This is our only backliner right now. These are both frontliners. Uh, so we need three backliners. That makes the cell sword kind of a low value player. So I think we have to kind of burn time recruiting. I have to go do a loop here. Fintersburg. I don't think we want to do this. It's hostile. Yeah, we obviously we're not doing Kiran's the hostile cities. We need we want to be able to get in chosen camps by day 60. I don't think we're short. Are we desperate enough to hire these guys? I guess I'm desperate enough to hire a poacher. Okay. Well there's our guy for that forged armor. Um Is this guy worth training as a backliner? Uh, the brawler is a god. <laughs> so he's going to be a fat newt probably, right? The brawler is indeed a god. For now, you can keep a shield in the backline. Yeah, why is he a god? Do we... Uh, so let's predict our stats here. Two star melee skill means plus 30, 90 attack, uh, including gifted. Two star melee defense means plus 30, plus 3 from gifted. Uh, that's 39 attack. He needs one resolve roll and he needs five HP rolls, leaving six rolls for anything we want. So he could be a fat new with giga high resolve for fearsome. He could be our anticipation guy. 
Or we could try to make him a hammer. Uh, with six free levels to commit to fatigue, he likely gains about 20. He could be a two-handed hammer with brawny. So we have to choose between fatigue neutral, very high resolve with fearsome, or a brawny hammer. Uh, I think we'll let the game play out. See how he, if he rolls well, we're more likely to be able to make him a hammer. 61 HP is kind of low for a brawler, but 104 fatigue is kind of high, so he's an above average brawler. <laughs> he's a good brawler that also has stars and sure footing. Spud? Spud rules? Okay, be spud rules. Ike here, guys. I'm not an Ike fan. Am I? I don't know. He's got bad resolve. He's got mediocre HP and fatigue. He's like usable hybrid. Are you desperate enough to use Ike, guys? Is the question. He's basically a min rolled hunter with no star. He's basically a min rolled hunter with one star attack. One no star melee attack. That's a brother we'd probably keep and be unhappy about keeping. I don't like keeping dead bodies around. I guess we see what we find in the loop. And if that's our best. This guy's a bleeder. I don't want to hire a bleeder if we don't have to. If that's really the best backliner, we finally roll with them. I have no idea what's in these camps. Not that interested in. If it's like Necrosvance or something, we just die. We're not ready for that crap. Okay. We hired the Beastie for 2.6k. We'll hire this guy. And again, we're looking for our 12, so. Unfortunately, the beastie's kind of bad, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, I hate to say it. This guy is kind of a waste of money. He min rolled. He min rolled everything, and he has no stars. Does anybody can anybody think of a use for Sigmund? One star defense, but straight min rolls. I can't think of a use for this guy. I think we just paid 3k for a pitchfork. Does anybody have an idea? I don't. Min roll, low roll, min roll, high roll, average, average. Yeah, there's just no use for this guy. I hate to say it, but usually beasties are fairly reliable hires when you just need a body. But I don't want to train guys that are dead ends at this point in the game. We don't need fodder. We need like we need mid game brothers, and he's not the thief. Um, probably dodge quick hands guy, right? This guy's a little bit better. He's got uh, a little more defense. Oh, uh, he's gonna get a little more defense out of in a dodge as well. Okay, so this is the dodge quick hands guy. Uh, we still don't have any backliners. We still have a suspicious lack of backliners. Anything worth buying here? Probably won't be because of the settlement situation. So, I'm not doing that. I can make an Alp Charm. Probably for our tank. We have one more city to check before we go raiding again. Uh, six nomads. Should be a fine fight, right? This is a dodge quick hands guy we said. So 
we got eleven. Um, I guess Ike we're in. We have twelve. I do want to aggressively look for better brothers. Yeah, I think so. Our, bro our brother quality is not great. That means I don't want to do missions with low quality brothers. We're going to go on a couple more raids. Now this... The prize of this fight is pull hammer. Could use some more quick hands weapons. These guys aren't like fighting yet. We have zero reason to let this guy attack us, do we? Unless we just kill- I think we just kill him here, don't we? Yeah, we just kill him. Try to stun him before he sets up a shield wall. Die. Okay. Good to see you, Lucas. We did get the quick hands weapon. Now uh, the scimitar is also worth a lot, so I'm gonna start using these. Um. Boom. Boom, boom. Looking for backliners. Alright, we get a map. I believe there's a... These ruins. Sounds like there's going to be something there then. We could try it. I think we'll probably could be fine there. Uh, now that we just now that we went to twelve, missions are not going to be great for us for a bit. Uh, we have a lot of useless guys, which you get punished for useless guys in missions because of the way the game stealing works. And that uh, each level one brother uh, counts the same as like two level one brothers counts the same as a level six brother, I believe. Obviously, two level one brothers at this point in the game are, are just dead weight. They're just a liability. Fast adaptation mace master brothers? I think if you can't find a tank, they're very valuable. I think if you, as you as you have a tank that uh, mace guys become less useful. Also, like, do you find a winged mace from a brigand leader? Like, those are the things where I determine if I if I make that build or not. Stun bots are good if you don't have another way to deal with high threat enemies. We're not fighting on a high threat enemies because we're raiders. Like, we're fighting supply caravans and we're more this raiders is more focused on high fight volume. So you, if you're taking a lot of easy fights, you don't need that stuff. <laughs> you can't even swing the orc chain. We gotta get rid of the orc chain soon, don't we? It's probably past its lifespan. We're starting to lose defense because because we don't have like less dodge value for having it. Oops. Um. I should 
probably try to drag dagger and armor. We could also just rely on the fact that we're like raiders and we just get random free gear all the time. Because this background's kind of OP. Um, the contracts scale only with your party strength, which is based on your party size and your level. The camps only scale with days and distance from your city. And the patrols scale a mix of your party strength and days. So contracts scale up as you hire. So you can like run around as lone wolf like on day 1000 still fighting seven thugs if you so choose. Can we get, get the helm? Guess we want the nomad sling for our new hire. Place in his backpack. Better helm. Everyone else's helms are fine. I think we do greed for student. These guys need to get to level seven before they're really usable. So, we could fight what's here. I think if it's Ancient Dead, we may not be able to fight. Looks like it might be Ancient Dead. Um, I don't know, do we fight Ancient Dead guys? We don't have great weapons for them. Um, Depends on how many there are. Let's check. A couple of mace, but I don't have guys to wield them. I think 12 aux is probably fine. If there's like legionaries with pikemen mixed in, we can't do it. Looks like it's aux. I think we're okay. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fine. We have that orc flail too, which oh, there's actually legos. With, this is a bit of a spooky fight. Um, I think we're fine though. We do have some guys that are going to be total dead weight, which is, that's the concern. We have a lot of brothers that won't, won't really do much of any job here. My formation's going to get jacked up on my turn order too. Yeah, our formation's going to be super jacked. Our turn order is just weird. I can try to spear roll stuff away. These, these, these ancient undead pikes are going to be really powerful. Getting like quick hands guys ready to go is going to be great here. Engelbert, is, are you new? You have 50 defense. I think you have to go here and shield wall and try to buy some space. These pikes do a lot of damage. We don't have nimble yet. Yeah, it's it's a fight where like it can go wrong. Uh, and we, we, we I don't. There's no, almost no chance of a wipe here. There's a reasonable chance of us losing, uh, losing money, like losing resources. And I think a chance of losing resources is not, not worth skipping an otherwise profitable fight over. I'm gonna have him shield wall just to give him more defense. This guy does have a backpack shield, I believe. Right, he's got to take it out and shield wall. He's got a lot of pikes pointed at him. We don't have a way to, to kill the pikes, to clean the pikes up quickly. Eugene here can go here and maybe try to tank a hit from this pikeman. Oh, I could go here. I would be the best play to help give him more resolve. That fearsome breaking him on, on the first time he got hit is annoying too. So we just have to hit, hit, have him here in shield wall. Uh, yeah, this is what I mean about losing money. Right, there's no there's no good play to prevent this stuff from happening. Like I can't this guy this guy won't go back if I knock him out. Okay, I have one more guy. Um he could try pushing. 
I got two pikes still hitting him. He probably dies, right? We just gotta give up on him. He could try pushing, and if it hits, okay, now he's good. He's good. Our new guy's getting pressured up here. Go ahead and help him. And that's just like the game scales up as you scales, scales up as you level, but there's like discrete power spikes, right? Like the difference between level six and level seven is massive in terms of your power. Like you have nimble, you don't, right? You have dodgy, you don't. Like, oof. You have fear some of you don't, so we don't and we just haven't hit those power spikes yet. And as we see, this this is why Orc Fail is just not as impressive as it looks like. This guy can't even attack anymore. Not just he can't he can't attack, period. He's just kinda of standing there being useless. I do want to get this guy off my new hire if we can. So it's time to sell the orc flail after this fight. Uh, fights are starting to become too long for orc weapons to be viable. Obviously if we had like Iron Man like or Iron Lungs dudes we could keep it but we don't. Knock him away off my new guy. He can just wait there. So we've missed probably three to four attacks on this guy because he has his orc flail. Um, as soon as we can, can replace it with anything, even like a reaver mace, we will. I know it does a ton of damage, but doing a ton of damage and only like missing half of the rounds of damage is also and not as good as just being able to swing every turn. It's not quite enough damage to make up for it. Yeah, when it hits, yeah. When it hits and the flails actually like the minimum damage on flails is really bad too. Like the they can low roll damage and then they don't they basically do nothing then. Okay. Okay, we got a famed nimble armor and three treasure items. Very nice. Who gets my famed nimble armor? Hafuga, my my best guy. This four percent. This armor gets passed on down. Gotta repair that. We're not gonna repair these. Is this armor worth using? I don't think this armor is really worth using. Apparently I can repair it and make 8 gold. I'll trust the game. I'll trust the mod when it says that. These pikes are amazing pickups though. So I think we stop, we stop with the backpack shields. We got reach weapons and all these guys. You keep your shield. And these guys do need student. Like, we're just not going to be able to use them in a reasonable time frame if we don't take student. Uh, we can keep fishing for better. My recruiting strategy is probably not spot on. Uh, I play a lot of Glads and Lone Wolf. So I tend to look for... I tend to not use reserves. I just look for brothers that are, like... Good enough that they, that they can have staying power. A couple cheap caravan hands we can try. Not even any nomads though. Uh, this is just uh, 42 one star is just not good enough. He, he's not gonna be able to hit stuff by the time we day one we would train this guy, but now like 
it's not very good. This guy, um, yeah, 100% worth it. How is this guy? Is he better than our current dodge quick hands guys? This guy's like, this guy's like not really worth using, right? We can keep in reserve because he's not going to cost us anything. We're going to have him like carry some gear or something. He can be an ancient, uh, ancient dead cosplay. He's just kind of backup if someone dies. Uh, let's go ahead and sell here. We do have uh, increased trade prices right now, so now is a good time to dump all this gear. Everything like worth something we're going to sell, even if we could repair it for a little bit more. All right. That's our ambition too. Let's go ahead and treat that injury. And we'll do one of these one skull quests while we heal. And that imp probably just gonna chill and repair till morning. Oh, we don't even have that much repair work. Let's, let's at least wait till we repair it up. So we did kind of take a detour here to look for brothers. Um, from here, our routing is going to be obviously back to Kabira. We can check this keep for recruits, and then I think we have to get back in the wilds. Uh, back in probably one or two more raids. We could go to Karakhan and look for recruits too, and then walk through here. We don't have fort on our banner yet. So we need at least one more level on the banner before we can do undead. I think we probably want one or two more trips before we start busting camps. Not having the scouter lookout is a grief, right? Yeah, we probably save up. We probably wait for the scout. We haven't really seen a lot of, uh... It's like cutthroats. I haven't really seen a lot of, uh... Beasts this, this run, have we? Thank you for the follow hounds. So we're actually near some important power spikes, getting nimble on people. Uh, these guys don't do anything yet, so let's not get them up front and get confused. This guy can also sit in the back with his reach weapon. One, two, three, four, five. We probably will buy that cell sword in that town if we see him again. So we're at the point where like recruiting is dynamic. We have money and, and we don't have good good recruits. That means stuff like cell swords becomes worth hiring. Like we're not just like fishing for gods, we're fishing for brothers that are better than barely usable. Do I skip Zerk Frenzy on this guy for like fast adaptation XE on this throw banner? I, he, I probably don't give my this this throw banner Zerk Frenzy because he's just he's not very good. <laughs> to be frank, we'll take a look at his perks in a minute. I have not I have not put fast adaptation on a throw banner before. Normally we fish for we only pick the build if we have a good candidate. I wanted to try it on the monk, and I think it's the build I'll always use for this origin again. The throws are just so strong early, even with low skill. Like, this monk with with no stars has 24 kills. I guess it's a half a kill a battle. But he puts in work with uh, without any stats behind it. I guess that's an argument for making this poacher into a... a A hybrid, right? Whoops. Um, I guess Shu Yard is probably out of the fight. He doesn't have dodge yet. 
He's got he got kinda of lit up. I guess not. We're not really pressuring him. Now we now we have him sheltered behind Hafuga. And these fights are about mitigating risk. It's like how how many times in a run do you like lose a brother in a fight like this because you're playing carelessly? And how many like extra how many tools can you save by playing these fights a little more carefully? We catch this guy now without a dog. Um, I don't think it's worth dropping a dog to catch this guy. The chance that he turns around and kills a dog is probably, I don't know, it's like one in five. But right now, this the amount of his experience is virtually irrelevant. If we were like earlier game and we're like we were trying to get those big like level three, four, five power spikes. Uh, get to dodge on the barbarians or something be worth nice we got a bowl silver bowl then grab colossus the thief and what do we have for this fat newt speed rules is he even a fat newt we don't know yet um i'm gonna take this four we don't know we're building this guy yet I think it's a stretch to try to make him Zerg Frenzy. He's gonna need famed items and veteran levels to do it. I'm like, does that actually happen? All right, so here are our options now, guys. We can check one more city looking for, we're basically going here looking for a Cell Sword or a Beast Slayer. This is a long walk, right? I don't think, this feels like it's not worth it. If we were going to explore this fog and kill things in there, I think we would do it, but... Caravan to here. We're not buying. Our, our brother quality is too low to want to buy gear. I think we're near professional, aren't we? Um, let's look. Competent, we're close. We could actually even get the Undead Ambition before we start busting Undead Camps. Uh, I mean this is obviously a fight we don't skip. Now I'm just gonna save Brain Cells. <laughs> we could try to, like, this fight is probably easy enough it's not worth trying to hyper-optimize. We're fighting eight Vita Gongers, like... We'll just quick hands with our quick hands, guys, if we can. You don't have quick hands yet? Feels bad, right? You don't have quick hands yet? Yikes. I guess I took underdog instead of quick hands, and now it feels kind of painful. Who knows? Underdog might have prevented an injury earlier. It's hard to second guess that stuff. Stun zombies and ancient dead. I just don't want this guy to hit me and take my tools. Oh. 
wasted three ammo there. It's like six gold. I wanted to put the last hit on these low level guys. Getting them to like level four pretty quickly is, I think, uh, I think important that they get like dodge and Colossus gifted. Get that stuff up and running. Uh, we do have quick hands here. What am I missing? Oh, he doesn't, doesn't think I'm student. We have underdog and student. I'm gonna value underdog. And pathfinder. We're not really fighting in terrain where pathfinder is great though. Do we have any potential hires? Squire. Feels kind of bad to be hiring squires, but... Okay, we'll talk about this guy in a second. And talk about this guy. So... Um... This guy's probably equivalent to the poacher. 46 one star is just kind of dumpy, right? He's gonna like 84 ranged. 77 melee. This guy's also not good. Negative four melee skill. Uh, we're not at a point when these guys are worth keeping, right? We're fishing for mid game brothers. We're basically looking for tempo hybrids and fat newts. I think anything else we're not interested in. Is this guy worth using like 84 range skill out at 11? Do we want to train this guy to 11 for 84 range skill? I think the answer is no. A min rolled hunter is 52, so this guy is worse than a minimum rolled hunter. Usable, yeah, but we have better than usable now. I would rather have a usable dodge quick hands guy, because if they die, then we can, we can slot them in there. Oh, we're not going to be missing frontliners. So I think we'll buy a couple things of food. We don't need to really top up ammo. Um... We can look through this little patch of fog here before we, we can look for recruits here again. I don't want to get stuck walking around circles looking for recruits. I think we go fight some nobles. Oh, I don't see any caravans right now, so let's make our way like this way around the map.